Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is the Apostate uh, Prophet. Uh, how is everybody doing? How are you, Nathan? Assalamu alaikum, brother. Uh, <laughs> good. <to> <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for inviting me. Alaikum <laughs> uh, uh, salam. Um, so uh, nobody here knows uh, who Nathan is. Everybody knows who I am because I'm famous. Uh, unfortunately, you are not. Uh, um, I like your channel a lot, and I like what you do with your commentary on things. But for all those who don't, who are not fortunate enough to know you, uh, can you please just yeah yeah sure um so I, what i started my channel it was just kind of um you know like a random youtube like link to my google account or whatever and then i became a christian sort of through jordan peterson in around 2016 um and after i became a christian i thought i would start making some apologetics videos so that was when i first i guess was kind of yeah i had some weird videos on there before then of me like doing random things um but that was when i sort of was like okay i'm going to use my channel for this now then I ended up deconverting from Christianity and made kind of videos throughout that time and that process. And then since then, I've made a bunch of videos sort of, you know, reflecting on that process, engaging with Christian philosophy um, predominantly. I've, I've engaged with, like, I've been in Hamza's den and stuff before, but, I, you know, I don't do that much stuff on Islamic um, apologetics and um, interviewing some philosophers and things as well. So, I'm, you know, my channel's kind of now a mixture of, um, stuff that's more philosophy based and stuff that's like just me hanging out and talking to people and doing reviews and yeah 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 no but, um no oh, there was there was that that's that's good I, I would suggest everyone go um for very uh, good insights subscribe to uh, Nathan's channel digital gnosis which is tagged in the title of this video of this live stream and also in the description actually not yet in the description I forgot that but I will add that um, later on I specifically invited uh, Nathan today because um, I occasionally uh, listen to his commentary on things and my wife actually listens uh, to your streams a lot I actually found out about you through her and I kind of uh, overhear uh, your responses to things and I find them uh, hilarious and uh, also quite uh, intelligent and as I was recently reviewing a debate between Daniel Kikachu and T-Jump there were moments where I was like what the hell are you talking about man and then I thought about you and your responses to things so I thought hey Let's just do this together. And um, we want to review a debate between Daniel Kikichu and uh, T-Jump on modern day debate, which is uh, so, which is called Are Atheists Consistent Skeptics, which I find to be a strange title to begin with. But um, in the debate, Daniel Kikichu makes a lot of fallacies, a lot of weird claims. You kind of uh, had a glimpse at it. And uh, I think you told me that it's really strange right <laughs> yeah i so i didn't watch this when it originally happened like I, I, st I still subscribe to modern day debate and get but there's been a lot of strange debates on modern day debate recently so i've not i've not been as into watching keeping up with everything that's happening um <laughs> but yeah i i watched his opening statement and then skipped around a little bit and i was just finding it very difficult to make sense of you know the sort of argument that he was supposed to be offering for his position or when i when i was clear on what he was trying to say um, it, it wasn't clear that what he was saying was true, right? He, you know, he'd rely on um, either, you know, spurious sort of claims that uh, about studies and things like that, where I was like, um, I'm not quite sure that that's exactly right, or that that does the work that you want it to do, um, oh. which I guess we'll see is when we when we get into those those specific points. Um, but yeah, I also I don't know that much about the world of Islamic apologetics. So I'm gonna kind of need you to fill me in a little bit on you know, like who, who this guy is, or is, is he like funded by someone or does it, you know, because I, I don't have any, when it, when it comes to the Christian apologetics universe, I've got, I can understand where people are coming from. Um, you know, if they've been like educated in an apologetics course or something like that. Whereas in the Islamic world, I just don't know anything about these people or where they're coming from. Um, I, I can take care of that. Uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> so Dana Kikichu is uh, a Muslim apologist known as Muslim skeptic, which uh, I don't think he knows what skeptic really means there. Uh, his channel is called Muslim Skeptic, um, and he is a fundamentalist uh, Muslim apologist who is becoming very popular, has like over 100,000 subscribers, I believe, right now. And um, he is just extremely outspoken on uh, matters that are considered controversial. He supports child marriage, supports uh, slavery, sex slavery, uh, supports wife beating, religious war, killing apostates, killing blasphemers, and so on. You know, all the all the bad stuff, all the package. He, he supports all the, the good hot thing. takes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He supports the entire, the entire set of uh, very nice Islamic beliefs. And uh, that's why he becomes, that's why he became so um, popular because he's so outspoken about these things. Uh, I guess I'll, I could show you clips of him saying those things, but uh, I just basically already told you. So I don't think there's any need for that. I recently showed Michaela Peters and I invited her and showed her uh, a clip from Daniel Kikichu and she was, she was shocked. Um, but yeah. Uh, so is just... he, does he have a background as an apologist? Did he like go to some Islamic university where they teach apologetics? I believe he uh, he studied. He actually studied um, a cert, a degree of uh, philosophy. I'm not sure at some some prestigious wow. university. I know that's that's incredible, right? <laughs> and uh, then moved on to um, physics, and I think he got a physic physics degree from. Uh, a master's degree in physics or something like that. I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but I think that's his background. And he got interested in uh, Islamic apologetics because he wasn't okay with the uh, secular worldview and all that. And was like, this is the enemy. And I guess some family trauma happened, which really turned him against uh, Western secular society and all that. Uh, but unfortunately, he became hardcore and now advocates for um, all the good stuff. You know. Right. So, so you're saying you've invited me to review this, but actually, you know, I'm now going to be on someone's like murder list as a result yeah, of just yeah. appearing. On... <laughs> yeah, I thought you were okay with that. So. Yeah, I can't, I can't go to the <laughs> Middle East anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were okay with that. that. That's why yeah, I, invited. So. I forgot to ask you. <laughs> no, it's all right. Don't. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But uh, here's just a beautiful glimpse of his uh, wonderful logic. I just want to show you this because I found something. Okay. Uh, let's see. Both Islam and human rights are in 100% agreement that women are accountable if they break the law. And that means Islam and human rights are in 100% agreement that women should be beaten. We only differ on who should do the beating. <laughs> So uh, this this is what we are uh, dealing with today. I mean, it sounds like there might be a little bit of a tension between the claim of like you know beating people and human rights, but that's just you know maybe yeah. my my Western sensibility. So. It's it's very <laughs> trivial. It's it doesn't matter. It's... <laughs> All right, are you ready to go to jump into the uh, debate? Yeah, yeah, By the way, I should, I should I should actually um, send a message to T Jump too. In fact, if he's uh, if he is aware yeah, of this yeah. stream, maybe he could come on here and comment on the issue too. Uh, if somebody could contact him, yeah. I yeah. think I've got him on Facebook. I could send him a yeah. message. Yeah, you could you could do that. All right. Um, I, oh, you know what? I think uh, Daniel Kikichu actually studied at Harvard. Harvard. So that's. Oh wow. That's, See, I just find that so surprising. Given, I mean, we're about to show his opening statement, right? But this was just a horrendous opening statement. I know. Like, the, I know. He, he has an argument that he's clearly written down and thought about, and it's not even a valid argument. I mean, yeah. like. This it, it it's just expected that you know if you're presenting an argument, it's there to clarify what you know what the case is that you're making, and it should be valid in the first place. And it's just completely confusing and all over the place. I mean, that's really surprising to me. It's, it's like my, my education on philosophy consists of taking uh, one or two courses and uh, you know reading a bunch of books and all that. And he's supposed to be professionally trained, and I watch his opening statement, and I'm like. What the hell is this? I mean, how how is this even possible? Is there something wrong? Did he not understand what he was studying? I don't know. Right, it's very strange. Um, let's go into it. All right. I just sent so, him the link. Sorry. What? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go yeah. Ahead. yeah. You can message him. Uh, we can start. Are you ready? Or do you want to? Okay. No, no, it's cool. It's cool. I just, just saying, I sent him uh, 
the link. I don't know if he's going to get it. He's always streaming. But... Oh, yeah. 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 All right. Let's go. Hey, everybody. Tonight we're debating whether or not atheists are consistent skeptics, and we are starting right now. Is the volume okay? It is for me, but I mean, maybe it's different for the audience. If it's for you, then it's, it's probably for everybody. You commented on how uh, <laughs> James looks like he got much older, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's the lighting or something, but it's like um, you know, I, James looked about twenty one about you know three years ago or something, and now he looks about fifty or sixty, you know, with these like <laughs> wrinkles and things. <laughs> I think it's 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 from moderating all these debates that he aged yeah. very badly. <laughs> no, I think it's just the lighting. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> With Daniel's opening statement, thanks so much for being with us, Daniel. The floor is all yours. Atheists say they do not believe in God because there's no scientific evidence for God. The operating principle here is that in order to be justified... In Stop. That's not true. <laughs> I was, I was going to pause it. I didn't... I did think in my head, like, I want to pause it, but then maybe we should let it play a bit more, because I almost always do this, you know, like, that someone yeah. makes a stupid statement five seconds in or something. Yeah, but it, but it, it is the first thing he says, and it's already terribly wrong. So yeah. you have to pause it, right? Do yeah. you want to comment on it? Um, I mean, so when it comes, I think, to, to discussions, philosophical discussions about whether or not God exists, I think it's best to take atheism to just be the position that a god doesn't that that no gods exist right mm -hmm. and obviously I, and i think that's that's permissive of people who are going to define atheism as a lack of belief maybe in um in a political context or something like that but i but i do think in it, when it comes to um you know if we're discussing whether or not god exists it's, it it sort of just muddies the water a bit to be like well i you know i lack a belief or people who lack a belief are atheists i think it's more useful you know, if we're disagreeing about whether or not God exists, for me to just take the stance that there is there is no God or there are no gods. Um, yeah. So then, if if that's what the position is, right? Well, that's just that's just what atheists believe about the issue that there are no gods. And then, I mean, they could believe that for any reasons, right? They might believe it because there's no scientific reasons. They might believe it for purely philosophical reasons. And um, they might believe it because they really loved their grandma and their grandma told them it was true. You know, like th there's a a number of different reasons that atheists might believe that um but you know just because there aren't any scientific reasons might not be uh, I, I mean that's just not what all atheists believe right yeah it's it's yeah absolutely um so i can speak for myself my reason for uh coming to the conclusion that there is no god for example was uh not that there is no scientific evidence for god it was um uh, it was purely it, it, it was philosophical. It had nothing to do with uh, scientific evidence. I know people who say, well, there is simply no evidence, therefore God does not exist. There are so many different perspectives. So him just coming out here and saying, atheists don't uh, believe in God because there is no scientific evidence is just, uh, I'm sorry, completely wrong. You're making a generalizing statement about atheists in general that is simply not true. That's it. We yeah. have five and, seconds and, in and you're already completely wrong. And a lot, I mean... I don't, I don't know how relevant this point is going to be. I, I mean, a lot, a lot of atheists, though, I think there are definitely some atheists who will say, look, I need some sort of like scientific type evidence in order to believe in God. But I think that most atheists, at least in the kind of philosophical space who are discussing God's existence, are like, you know, it, it, this just isn't the upshot of scientific considerations at all. You know, this is, these are questions about metaphysics and I just adopt some kind of naturalism or physicalism or something. Usually this is what, what, what philosophers think and then that just entails that no gods exist right that's yeah. just kind of baked into that worldview exactly exactly all right let's see we'll probably pause again after five seconds <laughs> in your belief in something you need to have scientific evidence in order to be justified in your belief for god the operating principle here is that in order to be justified in your belief in something you need to have scientific evidence but how consistent Basically the same thing. That was again a false claim. That's simply wrong. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it could. This could be a good point, maybe against um, like T jumps epistemology, it, it, provided I'm understanding and characterizing it right. Where I think T jump says something like, um, you know, you should only believe things that make novel testable predictions, or something like that. That could be wrong, though. But I mean, for for most people. There's a there's a whole ton of beliefs like that I have two hands or something right that 
pretty much no one thinks you have to have some kind of scientific proof. Yeah. Or, but then you could just broaden what you mean by scientific proof to just mean any observation or something or any like a, any sense perception, you know. And then and then I don't I I just don't think we're talking about you know science anymore because we're just, we're just encompassing anything that we observe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm meanwhile making notes of how many uh, fallacious and wrong things he said. For every thing that I hear, I, I put a, <laughs> I okay, draw a line. Yeah. I'll count them when we're done. Uh, and you have to do a shot for everyone. That's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they'll be they'll be horrible. Atheists and applying this principle, my argument is that atheists are not consistent. They are selective skeptics. Let me share my... I don't want to stop it every second, but I mean, I... it's again a broad statement that you simply cannot make if you're talking about uh, a, a, ver a huge variety of people whose only uh, shared you know, feature it is not to believe in a certain deity you cannot say they are inconsistent i mean of course they are inconsistent among each other they're supposed to be there humans they have different views that's not an argument though and you simply cannot make such a such a state such a broad statement you could say the same thing about muslims about every single human group and being it seems like the the actual disagreement of this debate is almost going to be about something other than what the title of the debate is because if the you know the the, the title of the debate being are atheists consistent skeptics sounds like you know is it true that all atheists are consistent skeptics and then t jumps when it comes to his turn to respond to respond is going to say something like well of course they're all not which might sound like he's um conceding you know the debate but i i do think there look, is look some i'm right i'm right like yeah <laughs> I but but the, i think that what the disagreement is over is is, is over whether daniel's like characterization of what atheists um should believe or something like only the scientific claims and what atheists in fact themselves say you know atheism is well it's just this single claim about god not existing whatever so um you know there's, there's nothing there about i have to believe everything that science tells me or i can only believe things that are justified yeah. by the sciences um, yeah. yeah sorry my dog is barking like hell uh which is haram screen here it's gonna share a screen let's wait That's a beautiful screen. Yeah. And this was really worthwhile as well because it added so much clarity, the uh, screen share. <laughs> uh, here is the argument. Premise one, atheists live in societies with governments and laws. Premise we live two, in a society. <laughs> Premise one, we live in a society. I thought it was Under governments thing. and laws they believe are morally evil. They will revolt. Premise three, to avoid civil war, there needs to be a basic consensus that the government and laws are not morally evil. If a high percentage of the people believe that government and laws are evil because of oppression, discrimination, or lies, they will revolt. Premise five. So, okay, already on this first page, um, I know there are so many things, I just don't want to pause like 5,000 times, but... Uh, he already makes a. <laughs> I see you're laughing, but he already makes the claim that uh, to avoid civil war, there needs to be consensus that the government and laws are not morally evil. Which you can only say that if, uh, if if all humans actually agreed on um, on such on a on a thing like uh, morally evil, on the existence of morally evil, people have different moral frameworks, different moral uh, perspectives, which is why you um, can't even make such a statement and be accurate in that unless you want to uh speak about the majority of people which again could also be entirely wrong yeah it i mean i i'll talk a bit more about this in a second because i try i really did try to make sense of what this argument with but just in terms of presentation something that i want to point out right is that this argument isn't really helping um to make clear what um daniel's position is and what the disagreement is so so he's got i think six is it six or seven six premises and two conclusions that he draws from this argument four of the premises are on one page the other four are on the other page they're all quite wordy you know so just in terms of making sense of what even the you know the claims are that, that are disputed or disagreed about it, it's i think this is just very unhelpful um, and arguments are often used like this in these sorts of debates, right, where the idea is if you can make your argument as kind of 
big and aggressive as possible, then it's like this weapon um, to intimidate your opponent and make you look very smart or something. And mm-hmm. I, I, I'm kind of, a, you know, I, I'm against that in general. And it's not clear if that is what's, what's going on here. Um, mm-hmm. Because if that is what's going on, it's, it, it's almost very tragic because it's not even clear that the argument's valid, you know, let alone that are many of the premises even true? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. maybe the first one's true, but then if we're not, if we're going to talk about are all are all atheist consistent skeptics, right? I can do that. I can use the same level of kind of um, precision, right, on this claim: atheists live in human societies. Well, not all atheists, right? You know, if, we're, <laughs> if we're if we're if we're if that's the level of precision we, we're concerned with, so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, even, so, even even the fourth premise here: if a high percentage of people believe that government and laws are evil, they will revolt. Is uh, how exactly did you come to that conclusion? It's uh, exactly it. It is. It simply does not follow. You cannot demonstrate this. If a high percentage of people believe that government and laws are evil, uh, they will revolt. They could revolt. Maybe they should revolt. Maybe they uh, they may revolt. Some of them may revolt. But they, they you cannot say they will revolt. This is simply. Uh, this is simply a fallacious, um, you know, point to begin with. And if you base your entire conclusion on such points, then it's it's going to go wrong. But he, he he also switches between, you know, his the terms that he's using. He's going to switch between using, I think, like um, revolt and civil war as well at different points in the argument. Mm-hmm. So those are different things, like revolt mm-hmm. and and civil war. Um, and and as you say, it's just it's just not clear that that these are actually true you know like humans will not live peacefully under governments and laws they believe are morally evil they will revolt well maybe in you know some cases right but maybe not in all cases maybe there's you know maybe the government is really powerful and people just feel helpless or people are you know so psychologically um, manipulated that they just ne- you know they never feel like they have the the power to revolt against that government in mm-hmm. any kind of way they just go along with their lives in kind of misery so, so it, it it's just and, and it and and in terms of the validity, like these th- these premises don't actually fit together, right? They're not like going anywhere. They're just like these independent claims that as a sitting idol, that fal- mm. you know, false independent claims. So it's it's as yeah. bad as it could get, really. Yeah, yeah. But um, who are you to speak? Daniel Kikichu says they will revolt, so they will. Uh, let's go to the next page. Premise five, or premise four. So, oh, sorry. Premise four, scientific facts alone are not enough to create consensus among That's large... not even the right number. <laughs> what? Consensus what? requires what? additional what? facts. Those facts can be religious how, choices. How is this happening? I don't even understand. Like, how is he on the wrong page while reading the right thing or the other way around? I don't, I don't even get it. How do you do this? Character, Or they can be non-religious in character. Those are the only two choices. Uh-huh. Premise five, atheists. Okay, so now I don't know how to solve this problem. So let's just read this again. Scientific facts alone are not enough to create consensus. Consensus requires additional factual claims, religious or non religious. Reject purported facts that are religious in character. Therefore, in accepting political consensus, atheists accept facts that are not religious in character and are not backed by science. You Therefore, see how it, in these conclusions, from... right? It, it's not clear. It, it's not clear at all what all of this stuff about revolt and civil war like has to do with. Yeah. Um, the conclusions that he's reached, which is why, yeah. it, in a formulation I tried to come up with, I tried to work that in because I was like, surely this has got to be doing some work in his how he's thinking about this, right? I know you, you yeah. actually you actually sent me. Uh, you tried to make sense of his argument and wrote it down and sent it to me, and I was like, well, this actually makes much more sense than what he presented. Well, uh, it's, I can it's, it's, show he doesn't that really connect the arguments. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but just to come to the to the issue here, atheists reject religious claims. Again, broad statement, not entirely true, not 100% true. Scientific facts alone are not enough to create consensus. Consensus requires additional factual claims, religious or non-religious. I don't have a big issue with this point. Uh, it depends, though, because, I mean, so they're enough to create scientific consensus, presumably, or it depends what you mean by scientific facts, right? And what, you, so, you know, like the facts existing out there, if you mean the, the states of affairs in the world, well, they don't sort of do anything. If you mean... Um, you know, people kind of discovering those facts or whatever, well, then they seem to be enough to create scientific consensus. But then, um, you know, are it are the sciences able to drive people's political beliefs? Well, maybe, uh, maybe not in a lot of cases as well. Um, so, so it's, you know, I'm not I'm not sure about that premise, I would say. 
Yeah, yeah. When it comes to the to seven, so it's it's entirely disconnected. We have no idea why uh, why all those premises were made to begin with. Coming to this conclusion, therefore, in accepting political consensus, atheists accept facts that are not religious and not scientific. It's already you, t you totally lose me here. And so many I people, think I, guess. I think there's an easier way to get to that conclusion, though, right? You could say um, something like, "Well, atheists believe they have hands." Um, having hands isn't a religious claim and it's not a scientific claim. So atheists have beliefs that are not religious and not scientific. Like, you don't need all that, all this stuff about like, yeah. Um, yeah. Evil laws and civil war and all that. Um, and the, the eighth, or did you want to share your, oh, wait. There I, I can do, but yeah, you can talk, talk about the, his conclusion if it would be useful. Um, the eighth one. Oh, okay, let's let's do that quickly, and then let's get back to yours. Uh, eighth, therefore, atheists are not consistent skeptics, at least those living in stable secular societies. <laughs> He's not said anything that would substantiate that. <laughs> yeah, uh, a very great example of how the conclusion doesn't follow from the premises at all. Please show us how. Uh, but then the remark, even at least those living in stable secular society. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. which means he is how he's thinking about it. It does connect back to the first things that he was saying, right, about um, people revolting and things like that. But it's just not clear how it connects. Um, like, what yeah. does it? I I don't think there are any premises about what it is to be consistent or anything like that. It's yeah. Just... Yeah, he needs to establish that first, right? I'm not uh, character it, and are not. Is there? Anything here? Uh, will not live peacefully. Because what he's not established is that it, he, he's not established right that um, scientific and religious facts uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, mutually uh, like exhaust the space of all the relevant facts, right? Mm -hmm. So it could mm -hmm. be the case. So he needs some premise that says something like that because it could be the case that skeptics have these beliefs that aren't justified um, scientifically and they're not justified, re you know, religiously either. But they just sit somewhere else because it's not been established that religious facts and scientific facts exhaust all the facts that there are or something. Maybe there's this yeah. realm of political facts or moral facts or something. Yeah, I did, this is the thing. I listen to this and um, I think about the fact that this guy, um, you know, is at least uh, by his own, um, you know, by his own statement, a graduate in, in philosophy from a prestigious university. And he keeps bringing that up again and again and again and brags about it a lot. But then I listen to this and it just doesn't make sense. Right. Yeah, I mean, and, and you never know, but I mean, but this sort of thing honestly would not be, I, I would be surprised if this would get like a passing grade on like an undergraduate um, uh -huh. essay, you know, like in philosophy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, Daniel Kikichu is a very uh, tough man, and therefore, who are we to to judge that he will destroy us all with his toughness? So. Well, that that is this is a consistent theme I found with um, Islamic apologists in my engagements, and it's also you know with like um, in Christianity, sort of some Calvinist communities and things. But you know how much the the idea of being like a tough a tough guy a masculine man and all these things sort of play into these kind of stereotypes that people try to perform in being the apologist so you know like with Muhammad hijab ripping his shirt off as he gives a speech or something and it, you know he, he's telling himself some story about like who he is and what it means to be a leader of of the islamic peoples or something i just find yeah. it very interesting and then he even posted uh, that video on his own channel with some uh, emotional, inspiring music. And yes, right. and a filter on it. It's just so ridiculous. <laughs> uh, do you want to refer to your own version to make it more understandable? So yeah, I, I just tr wanted to try to make sense of what he was saying because this isn't even a valid argument. So val validity in a deductive argument is just to say that the the premises being true guarantees the truth of the con conclusion. And that's usually just expected coming into it, you know, looking at an argument. So then you can talk about whether or not the premises are true, which is presumably what you disagree about. Um, so I sort of, this was my best attempt to make sense of what he was saying. And I broke it down into these like two little arguments whose conclusions inform this sort of final point here. And I think it becomes apparent just how absurd the argument is when it when it is put in this form. But I don't think this is a straw man of what he was saying. So um, I think he was saying something like, societal consensus is a consensus of non-scientific claims 
Um, but atheists only agree about scientific claims, right? And obviously that's not true. Atheists not true. agree about a bunch of other things. I mean, presumably the non-existence of God is a non-scientific claim, right? That atheists agree about. Um, so, so therefore atheists do not have societal consensus. So that would, that would be the first sort of mini argument. And then if some social group shouldn't revolt so that's a claim about what what the group should and shouldn't do right which may this is may or may not be true but if if some social group shouldn't revolt then every so then, then it's true that every social group has a consensus that the laws of a nation are not morally evil um if a social group does not have societal consensus then that group does not have consensus that the laws of their nation are not morally evil um atheists do not have a consensus that the laws of their nation are not morally evil um, therefore, there should be a revolt of atheists. So I think this is the second sort of um, conclusion. And obviously, you know, I, I don't think I don't think any of this is right either. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I mean, when, when, I, when I look at it, when I look at it, I, I see. I mean, when I when you sent me this, I thought, okay, this is uh, much better formulated, but it's just dumb. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's at least it's valid, stupid. but then it's, it yeah. becomes more clear that the premises are just completely wrong. I mean, even yeah. even if you weren't sure about what any of these premises mean, right? The way that arguments work, um, it's just a re it's a relationship of logical entailment between the conclusions and the premises. So you can be that sure that this conclusion is wrong, right? That you're you're like, well, look, I don't know anything about those premises, but I know that I don't accept them all together at the same time mm -hmm. if they entail mm -hmm. that. Um, so that that's something. So then. So then I think then this final bit piece of the argument is to say, well, consistent skeptics always do what they should do. Um, and I'm not sure that that's right either. Um, atheists don't revolt. Um, so atheists don't do what they should do. So atheists aren't yeah. consistent skeptics. And that's pretty the best much. sense I could make of it. But Pretty, pretty much, pretty much. Uh, thank you for helping him out, although he prepared a huge uh, presentation here. <laughs> um, but I think now let's... With, with some better knowledge of what he actually means. Let's go and listen to him. Premise five, atheists reject proposal and are not at least those living in stable secular societies. So for example, look at China with over 60% atheist population, the highest in the world. Do you think Chinese atheists are free thinkers? No, obviously much of their worldview is Chinese nationalist propaganda. Or consider the former USSR, a government which was explicitly atheist and ruled over millions of atheists. Were Soviet atheist free thinkers? I just, <laughs> I just can't help it, man. <laughs> I mean, how yeah. stupid is this? I, what, what, what kind of an idiotic thing is, what kind of an idiotic? idiotic presentation is this what kind of a dumb idea i mean oh my god so i'm trying to make sense of so i think from where he's coming from though this makes perfect sense but i think yeah. i think that what it shows you is just how um how biased his kind of position is you know it's all kind of stereotype so it's like because i remember this similar rhetoric right being a christian about how atheist societies are basically you know communist china or the soviet union like they're your options kind of thing i mean this is one of jordan peterson's big points right um and, yeah. and obviously, you know, their worldviews aren't informed purely by scientific facts. But then there's this further claim as well that atheists pretend that they only believe scientific facts. I mean, we, we established right at the start that that just isn't what most atheists at least think, right? That they only believe scientific yeah, facts or something. Yeah. Like, I had breakfast this morning, isn't a scientific fact? Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, this is just a, this is just a mess. But I but I think to his audience that the the point from like a social point of view is this is going to make a lot of sense to his audience because it's ticking all these right stereotype boxes of like well mention communism communism bad and that's what atheism does you know and, and so you can kind of look at what the enemy is and what they believe in the world they want. Yeah, I mean it's it's just such a um, such a primitive approach to the uh, entire to the entire issue to the divide between theism and atheism, and um, I'm such such an ignorant statement to make. Where I am really wondering, does he actually uh, hold these views, and does he really think this way? Because if so, that's that's incredibly stupid. Or does he just use yeah. these talking points to appeal to a to a an audience that doesn't know better? It, or it could be that this is what he genuinely has to tell himself to cling on to Islam, right? It's like, well, look, if I didn't believe this, it, the other the alternative is communism. And um. I mean, it, it's it's very it's very simple, isn't it? I mean, 
this is like he comes to you or to to me an atheist and says also oh, you're not an atheist you think you are you, you think you think uh you are upon the truth uh so you only accept scientific facts right well what about china many uh most people in china are atheists but they are not uh they don't have a uh you know a, a free society so how huh, where's your consistency dude what the hell yeah are that's you a great point <laughs> yeah what are you talking about i mean we, we are atheists in so far allegedly in so far that uh we apparently do not have a belief in a certain uh, in, in a deity or in a certain deity whatever it is which does not mean that uh we also agree that there are no you know spiritual beings that there is no spiritual realm that there is no you know not no fantasy no no supernatural stuff but somebody else a chinese person for example can be an atheist while also believing that uh you know the ghosts of their ancestors are haunting their ha home and and so on it's completely uh entirely possible because an atheist just does not believe in god an atheist is not by doctrine or by the book required to also uh you know reject all kinds of beliefs in uh, the unseen and uh, in supernatural beings and 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 all that and um if, if you reference the soviet union or uh today's uh, chinese population and government as an example for atheists then you are just doing an even dumber mistake uh those people simply happen to be atheists as a result of their policies of their worldviews and so on that does not mean that we follow the same worldview it is just it is almost like saying hey you are a theist you believe in god uh, you you are a Muslim. You say you have a perfect society. Then what about uh, this? You know, South American state, which is uh, which are very religious Christians, and they're not doing so well. So what what are you going to say about that? Huh? Like, it's dumb. <laughs> and, and another thing to to just to highlight as well is this this doesn't actually establish that they're not consistent skeptics, right? Because mm -hmm. these people in China who are atheists and believe all these this Chinese propaganda about about whatever it is that they believe. Well, maybe they have very good reasons to believe that, right? Maybe for every skeptical argument you'd raise, they in fact have. So he's, you know, he's not really established um, the, the 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 kind of conclusion that that he's reaching for by pointing to them. But um, as as you said, it's kind of like it's like um, I accuse you of being irrational, right? I'm like, look, you, you're you're irrational, and then you go, well, why is it that you think I'm irrational? And I say, well, Tom over there believes in square circles <laughs> <It's> like, uh... <laughs> right okay so therefore <laughs> you are inconsistent <laughs> yeah and we didn't even talk about the actual point of his <laughs> of of uh well, that he's trying to make here which is that uh atheists pretend they only operate based on scientific facts which is simply wrong it's a wrong generalization and uh and and but they also abide by non-scientific facts and do not revolt which does not follow from any of the premises and which simply is again wrong i i mean i just i just can't find any other way to say it. it's just the wrong it is dumb a, it doesn't make sense man so someone gave me a term recently that i i think is quite interesting for these for these sorts of situations where he said fractally wrong right so you know like a fractal is one of those images where you keep you go into it and it keeps reproducing the same image uh -huh. again and again and again and so the <laughs> idea of being fractally wrong is like you assess any of the claims right and the so the claims like wrong in the first place and then you dig into it and there's like 10 more wrong claims and then in each <laughs> of them there's like 10 more wrong claims. yeah exactly there is no end to it oh man uh no, their worldview is dictated in large part by Soviet propaganda. Well, we have the same situation in the secular West. The state propaganda is liberal, secular, political ideology, and no one is more blindly committed to that ideology than Western atheists. Than T-Jump, who you're debating, who's literally been, like, cancelled for doing all this super straight stuff and things. I mean, I don't agree with him about that stuff, but, I mean, it's like, know the person you're debating, right? Like, I'm just going to put, put another line here for something extremely ridiculously stupid that he said without going into it again. <laughs> We can understand this better with four categories of examples. Examples that have to do with utilitarianism, about human nature, about group difference, and about so-called conspiracy theories. So-called conspiracy theories. Yeah. 
conspiracy hypotheses, he means. <laughs> <laughs> Utilitarianism, what is natural group difference is in consp so-called conspiracy hypothesis. Let's start with the first category of utilitarianism. I love. I like that we get T Jump's facial expressions back now because they're always golden when people are saying <laughs> like, democracy <laughs> versus dictatorship. Or not Which able to see your, pardon my interruption. We're not able to see your slides anymore. If you still had slides you were showing, yeah, I took off the screen share. Got uh, it. So you shouldn't see any more slides. You got it. Consider democracy versus dictatorship. Which political model leads to better socioeconomic outcomes? You can bring in a ton of empirical data to weigh pro. Wait, wait a second, I missed what he just. What, what was he comparing? Did he say um, democracy and dictatorship? Okay, uh, and was... which has the best socioeconomic? I think he said outcomes. But... Yeah, I, I was too focused on the on what's going on there. And cons to justify either position, but ultimately, science alone is not going to definitively decide. You need additional facts that go beyond science to justify one position, and that's where political ideas. <laughs> and that's where political science comes wow, in. But wow, okay. wow, who knew about that? Who knew about that? It's like you're giving me some, some new great wisdom here. I never, never knew about this. I never knew that science alone is not enough to, you know, going into a laboratory is not enough to come to... <laughs> Well, this is the problem, right? Is that like science is characterized as just like mixing stuff together in test tubes or something. And it's like, well, how are you going to figure out which political system's best if you're just as an atheist, just m focused on mixing stuff together in test tubes, right? Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. My test tubes don't tell me that democracy <laughs> is better than dictatorship. So what am I going to do now? Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I must become a Muslim. <laughs> Again, <that's laughs> oh, man. I mean, do you not see how stupid this is? Please, man. Another line here, okay. Uh... Theology comes in. Of course, we find that atheists in the West overwhelmingly support the idea of liberal democracy. Atheists How in foolish. China or the U.S. As <laughs> yeah. Which depends on uh, cultural uh, factors, but I think they get into they get into that after a while. Or beg to differ. Another example, atheists believe that giving people more and more freedoms is good for society and increases happiness and prosperity. Wrong. I uh, see a lot of people who do not agree with that. I encounter a lot of people, and I'm sure so do you, who say, hey, I am an atheist, but I'm completely against this trend that is currently going on. We need to go back to this and this uh, time where things were better. There are people who say I'm a conservative atheist. There are people who say I'm an atheist, and I think we should uh, establish a, 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 a monarchy in, uh, in America. Okay, that's probably an exaggeration. I don't know. I've never heard of that. But, but you know, there are different atheists who have all kinds of different um, different ideas which they um, propose. This is, again, a statement that is just made up out of thin air. Yeah, it's like the, the idea of giving people freedoms is always going to be a kind of balancing act between, mm -hmm. you know, some people's freedoms and others. Because, you know, by saying people have the right not to be raped, you're sort of infringing on the rights of those who have the desire to rape people, right? By saying people have the freedom the freedom to own private property. You're saying like, well, yeah, some yeah. other people can't steal or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So where, where... And I'm not in favor of those freedoms, right? I, mean, I, I don't want people to have these other freedoms to like steal and rape and murder. Yeah, yeah. For example, Daniel Kikichi, he believed that it's uh, that it's okay to take uh, sex slaves and to rape them and to beat people and to marry children and all that. And I, I as an atheist, I don't, th I don't support those freedoms. You know, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. By what standard? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, I'm deeply, I'm deeply sorry. But you have to accept that I simply cannot support these freedoms. I, I don't like them. I don't want them. It's just, it's just like I don't like, I don't like how they sound. That's why. You know, it's like I like I like um, specific forms of ice cream. I don't like other forms of ice cream, and just like that, I don't like sex slavery, for example. I like consensual sex. <laughs> this is probably how this is actually how he thinks. I mean, he's probably going to take this seriously. What is that's actually how he thinks? Oh my god! <laughs> but is this actually true? Again, a utilitarian argument weighing net benefits versus net harms based on empirical evidence could show that actually individual freedoms should be strictly limited. 
There could be arguments either way, but the point is science cannot definitive. Oh my God. Uh, there are different forms of utilitarianism, which you should learn in a simple um, course on these uh, philosophies. I mean, he should know these things, right? He's a, he's he's supposedly an expert in the in these things. Um, different forms of utilitarianism, which come to di to different um, solutions through different means, and some propose that that uh, acts themselves are uh, inherently good or evil, whereas others conclude that they are only good or evil based on uh, the actual outcome. Um, you have different perspectives on utilitarianism. This is, again, a broad statement where you also cannot simply are. I mean, I'm not even getting into how he mis misrepresents the actual conclusion of utilitarianism, which is not, well, if there is like net good, then it's OK. You know? And if there is net evil, net harm, then it's not OK. That's that's simply not how you treat the situation. Right. I, I think maybe what Daniel's sort of confused between is something like um... Na you know natural and science or something so you know most atheists tend to be something like naturalists mm -hmm. and so you know in, in, a, in a naturalist framework well being a utilitarian right is perfectly fine you're not appealing mm -hmm. to non-natural you know it's not like pleasure is a non-natural phenomena or something so i think he i think he's kind of getting confused between that saying atheists only believe these scientific things and then he's like well look utilitarianism isn't a science or something so therefore gotcha you know now now you're, yeah. you're committed to it but it's like no but it's still a naturalist right and that's the important point and naturalism entails the falsity of theism because there are no gods of natural and, and, and there's a thing i mean one of the basics of utilitarianism and of people who um you know established and um proposed utilitarian ideas is that um you are supposed to you are supposed to be allowed to think freely. Your mind, uh, your thoughts, and your opinions are not to be, um, you know, suppressed just because people are offended. Because um, establishing um, certain, um, you know, religious laws or other laws, and uh, based on them suppressing what people may or may not think and say, will lead to uh, societal unrest and eventually to societal uh, collapse and revolutions and revolutions and revolutions again. Which is why uh, the ideal thing to do is to let people think freely, establish free speech, and uh, only, um, you know only restrict people if they actually cause harm, if they actually hurt others. I mean, based on this principle, you could not uh, say, oh, you know what? Um, I think based on my utilitarian ideas, it is actually uh, better for us to, um, you know, it's, it's actually better that women uh, cover themselves up and don't leave the house anymore. Therefore, we need to uh, lock all women into their homes, make them uh, subject to their husbands. And if they don't obey, then we will just beat the hell out of them. It, it is it is contrary, it is contradictory. It is contrary to the, to the fundamentals of the philosophy that you're appealing to, which is why it simply doesn't work. Is there anything you want to add or do you want to move on? No, I'm happy to move on. I, I, I am also a bit um, conscious of we're seven minutes into the video in this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's not our fault. It's Daniel's fault. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Um... ...settle this question. Despite this, atheists are unanimous. Where's their skepticism? Or what about encouraging women... I'll just make a line. Atheists are not unanimous. I'm sorry. <laughs> Where's your skepticism? Well, it's like, you know, I was skeptical about moral theories and that's why yeah. I kind of fell on utilitarianism, right? Like, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm currently exercising skepticism by uh, questioning every single word that he says uh, very accurately. I think, I don't know. We could a little bit more skepticism about this argument when he was putting it together would have been helpful. <laughs> <laughs> to pursue careers as opposed to being mothers and homemakers. There is a lot of empirical data showing how careerism among women is associated with higher rates of mental illness, worse outcomes. For it is a mental illness. If women, if they want jobs, that's a mental illness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, is he actually going to present uh, data on that? Because I'm pretty sure that that is uh, a, an example of correlation, not causation. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, it's always going to be the case when people pull out statistics, you know, the, the old kind of adage, right? You can use statistics to prove anything. And, and, and yeah, what's the exactly. best explanation of why, of why you see those things? Like correlations can be indicative of causation, but I mean, you're going to need to do a bit more work there. Yeah. And he's not actually presented or told us what his sources are. You know, whether it could be like, you know, my source for this is I asked my Muslim mother and sister or something, you know, like, and a hundred percent of respondents said, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, if, if he's going to get, if he's just going to say, uh, this person says, uh, let, let's see what he says. Maybe, he, maybe he'll give us a source. And many other negative social effects. How do we decide which policy is best? One method is to let religion dictate laws and social policy. Religion creates that moral consensus, and that is most common. In well, this just isn't true, is it? Uh, like, if you just look at the the Middle East, right, and all of the division between Islamic um, countries with their various different, you know, theologies and different political systems and disagreements, there isn't consensus. <laughs> yeah, there simply is no consensus. There is no consensus among uh, religious people. There is no consensus among. Um, Sunnis or uh, Shiites or others, there is no consensus uh, among the different um, schools and movements within the Sunnis and Shiites. And uh, if we if we want to come down to it, this guy is uh, what you would call a Salafi Muslim, who are a very fundamentalist revivalist movement. And there is not even consensus among them. It simply uh, it simply is not true. These people, um, I mean, we, we see an example of it. If you just uh, start exploring the online Muslim apologists scene, the Dawah scene, they are constantly fighting, accusing each other of, uh, you know, of, of corrupting the religion and of uh, whatever it is. And there's constant drama going on. It's like, it's, it's actually very uh, enjoyable to watch. I preferred to uh, TV dramas, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 this it's is also my fun. guilty pleasure, my like entertainment <laughs> is, uh, is, is watching, you know, the weird space of, of, of human beings as they try to <laughs> rationalize their kind of like religious commitments. And stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is. And there, it, it, it's, it's, it's religion so creates that one method is to let, how do we decide which policy is best? One method is to let religion dictate laws and social policy. Religion creates... Okay, um, one more thing that I want to add briefly. Uh, you would have to get much deeper into this. But um, first off, he didn't present any evidence that, uh, that um, you know, women who work instead of uh, you know staying at home have increased mental uh, illnesses and all that. He didn't present any evidence for that. But even if, even if that were true, the conclusion would then not be therefore uh it is wrong that women work and we should uh we should therefore ban women from work and they should stay at home that is yeah, simply it not could be that we should just have like you know women should work but we should also have mental health care right alongside yeah, work yeah, and maybe yeah. that would be better like, yeah or we should find the cause why it causes uh you know increased mental illness and should tackle that i mean just because you analyzed uh, just because you found a piece of evidence, which, by the way, we have not seen, that does not mean, oh, look, therefore, this is bad. OK, let's shut it down. Let's shut it all down. Like, that's simply that's stupid. I'm sorry. And I'm putting another line for that. So uh. it's that moral consensus. And that is most common in human history. But that's precisely what atheists reject. So how can secular governments create consensus? Well, they fabricate claims to support their liberal ideology. They think. Now, how do religions create consensus? <laughs> <laughs> they fabricate claims to create. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, you can argue the same thing from the from the other uh, perspective, from the other side of the room. I mean, it's it's just it's very simple. It's really very very simple. And wow, I mean, I'm I'm very shocked to find out that atheists make laws by thinking and coming up with uh, ideas. You know. Why, why would they do something like that? Why would they think and come up with ideas? Why would they do that? It's it's very bad. The laws, like whether whether or not the laws of the country are there by consensus, is very you know like dependent on that particular country's government and stuff. So you know it might be the case that people vote representatives who are supposed to pass laws that you know, but but the people aren't voting on the laws that get passed. At, at least in the yeah. UK, right? So hey, hey, look at T Jump's reaction though. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a pr the appropriate response. <laughs> oh my. You know what's funny? I actually went down in the um into the comment section of this stream 
and oh, I had no. to I had to find out that the entire comment section was again spammed by uh, you know Islamists who uh, just are completely in um, in support of Daniel. Some say stuff like I am an atheist, but Daniel did such a great job. Obviously, that, that's not true. So you're not you're not an atheist, uh, <laughs> and it's very funny because when you go into the comment section first and you read the comments and you're like, wait a minute, what happened to you? I guess yeah, he jumped at a terrible job and Daniel Kikuchi was so much better. But then when you actually watch the debate, you want to pull your hair out because of the nonsense that Daniel Kikic uh, you know, talks. And you entirely agree with T-Jump and his responses. But the comment section, it turns out, is just full of spam by Muslims who want to give people the perception that their side is right by leaving comments and suppressing uh, you know, the, the public opinion. <laughs> Well, this, this is always the problem with these sorts of things, you know, like people, and, and it, it does afflict, you know, the atheist side as well. Like you, you sort of come into it and you just see what you kind of want to see. And it, it's a broader critique of these debates, right? They can, they can be fun and entertaining and stuff, but they're just not necessarily a very good measure of like, you know, which, which position is true. Because often, oftentimes yeah. it's, you just want to see, you know, your team fling shit at the other team or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> John Ward made a comment. He said, I'm an atheist, but what Daniel said has made me take the shot right now. <laughs> right. This is not even this is not even an exaggeration. I mean, you can find these comments in such comment sections. Yeah. And it's and you know it's it's non it's Well, I mean the, his argument didn't even have anything to do with Islam, right? Yeah. Could, so yeah, it's like yeah, religion creates consensus. Okay, I'm becoming a Mormon, right? Like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's so ridiculous, man. And aggressively censor competing narratives. Their liberal ideology and aggressively censor competing narratives. For example, if we were to suggest, well, empirical data shows that net harm of women in the workplace is actually greater than the benefit, therefore we should ban it. What is the response from atheists and the that, That's wrong. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> That's that's uh, first of evidence. Uh, secondly, horrible argument, horrible conclusion, which does not at all follow from the premises. It's it's just so. Oh, I'm I'm trying to hold it in and not say <laughs> what I really think. It's just as, what is the response? As though <laughs> you know, as though there's just nothing that can be said to this. It's like whoa, yeah, wow, that is insane when you think about it. My world but he's, he's he's gonna say though, but then we get cancelled when we say these things. And oh my god, therefore atheists are not consistent skeptics. <laughs> Liberal secularism. They say that's misogyny, that's hate speech, that's extremism. You're blocked from exploring or even considering a set of potential scientific facts. He if you're says on a platform as he literally publicly talks about these ideas <laughs> with atheists. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, okay, here's one thing I agree that people should have much more um, freedom to say whatever the hell they want on um, social media platforms. Uh, because I, th I think it's the right way to let everyone speak their opinion as long as they are not, you know, uh, saying, let's go and kill these, the, 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 this group of people, uh, that they should present their ideas as, as controversial as they are, because people, people should be able to explore different ideas and to weigh the pros and cons and all that. So I, I agree with that. But what exactly does it have to do with your entire uh, debate topic here? <laughs> yeah, so I, so I think maybe maybe the idea is that the claims he's making are not scientific ones. So atheists who believe only scientific things can't say that they're wrong, but then they're still willing to ban. Um, they're still willing to ban him or whatever, if that's true. Um, and then that means that they're committed to non-scientific claims, which is in conflict conflict with the fact that they only believe they claim to only believe scientific claims or something like that but i mean all of that's not really true so yeah 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 but well well yeah Nick, you'll not get funding for your research you'll be kicked out of academia that, get... so that point you'll not get funding for, there is so much funding for islamic scholarship in the at least in uk universities right if you want to if you want to do like a, a degree in the humanities, there's very little independent fund. I mean, there's some from places like the Templeton uh, Foundation or something like that, but there's very little independent funding, at least for um, for like studying philosophy and stuff like that. 
but there's a ton of funding if you want to um you know do an Islam a scholarship in islamic philosophy so not even historical islamic philosophy you know the contemporary bringing forward the contemporary theology and bring it into um dialogue with modern analytic philosophy or something oh yeah 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 I, that, that, that that's again a very terrible thing to go to i mean uh, if, if i say things that people don't like then i will not get funding for my research oh, uh, well, great. I mean, <laughs> even if well, that is too, too bad. Well, that I mean, would be a good thing if it was. Yeah, it's like, yeah, you're, you know, it's kind of like that that um, Mitchell and Webb um, bit, you know, where they're like, are we the baddies when they've got skulls on their caps and things? It's like, have you ever thought, <laughs> you know, we've got skulls on, are we the bad guys? It's like, yeah. <laughs> um, th there's a reason that, that uh, mainstream universities don't want to associate with like Wahhabi Islam or whatever. Yeah, I mean, if if I had to vote for, um, uh, you know, a, a a research a project, I would certainly not say, hey, you know what? Let's give our funding to uh, this guy who wants to make a research uh, about why it is good to execute people who leave their religion. I would be like, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think we should, we should be funding that. No, let, let's just. But as I said, as far as I'm aware, though, there is actually lots of funding for now, maybe it could be the case that they wouldn't fund, you know, if someone was like, I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to exegete the Quran and figure out justify, um, mm -hmm. justify like child slavery or something weird. I don't know. Um, maybe they'd be like, yeah, that's too spicy for us. But um, there it, it, it's just not true that there isn't funding for Islamic scholarship because yeah, yeah. there's disproportionately more funding for Islamic scholarship than there is. lots of other, you know, than atheist scholarship in the UN. If you there, there is, there is. But Robert Moshe Thompson said, my friend who is a trans man says, thank you, Sheikh Kibudi, for validating his manhood. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I published a video yesterday in which uh, a Muslim caller named Sheikh Kibudi uh, explains what is a woman. Uh, okay. <laughs> you, should, you should watch it and analyze it sometime. The conclusion is basically if you have a beard, then you're a man. If you don't have a beard, then you're a woman. That's how simple. Right. <laughs> well, I, I have seen some Muslim ladies with beards, I think. Um, so I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I think I have. <laughs> well, well they're, they're men, so. Yeah, yeah right. Uh... <laughs> banned from social media, you might even be charged with hate speech in some secular countries. You're not allowed to research scientific facts. And as we have established, just like in the case of uh, China and the Soviet Union, just because uh, certain laws judge you and uh, charge you with certain things, it does not mean atheists are therefore inconsistent. This is very simple. Another point for you. Let's go. Facts that are politically incorrect according to the secular establishment. It's just asserted that science supports the secular position. So where's the skepticism from atheists? Now, let's move to the second category of examples regarding... <laughs> So where so where's the skepticism from atheists? What does he want me to like point over there? Like over there. There you go. Like, <laughs> there it is. All of these things and the conclusion. So where is the skepticism from atheists? I'm like <laughs> But but I mean it that's you know that the thing is he's saying we're implying that that, that there isn't the skepticism right but he's not actually yeah. established that there isn't skepticism there. Yeah, yeah. Show show us that there is no skepticism. Come on, demonstrate it, man. This is, oh my God, this is, we are eight, we're almost nine minutes in, into the video. This is horrible. What is human nature? Are human beings naturally atheist or religious? Plenty Natural. of evidence suggests that humans are naturally religious and believe in God. Uh, I'm sorry, that's simply wrong. Yeah, I mean, so, so I mean that the the whole notion of a human nature in the first place is very philosophically loaded, right? The idea mm -hmm. that there are kind of like um, what it is to be a human that that's going to be a that's going to be a philosophical thing. Um, I mean, th there's obviously a lot of evidence that um, cross culturally people have religious beliefs of some sort, or you know, mm -hmm. so so I think something like ancestor worship is like very common um, amongst most human societies, but that's very different from the sort of you know, religious beliefs that that people who are Muslims have. Um, and, and but yeah, I, th I think this, you've got to be really careful whenever you hear this language about like human nature, I think, because <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, people, people are more often than not just them baking in some kind of like prejudice that they want to establish, right? Like, this is what it is to be human is to, you know, is to hate gay people or to, you know, something like it's against human nature to be gay. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. And he's referencing, he's saying that uh, there is 
plenty of evidence that humans are naturally um, religious. Um, I, as far as I know, there are only there's only one major research which actually um, you know um, explores this this question by um, uh, what's his name? Oh, I forgot his name. If you know. Um, a prestigious researcher who also is a devout Christian, by the way, and he admits, the guy himself admits, I just recently mentioned this in a video that I made about uh, the singer Dua Lipa, which is very funny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he mentions in the, he, he says, he mentions in the research and in the conclusion that it is not his intention to prove that humans are naturally religious or that humans naturally believe in a god and the conclusion is not that uh, that it is um that the belief in god is inherent to humans the conclusion is that humans have the tendency to uh to explore and to uh, question yes, certain right. things and to come to the yeah. conclusion that there is probably something out there but depending on their culture and their environment they can come to a different conclusion there's some, probably something out there or there are some people out there and in cultures where there is a complete lack of religion people may not come to that conclusion but come may come to different conclusions instead so people are not necessarily inherently religious that's what the scholar himself says i just recently made a video i forgot his name really um and he even gives an example to um show beliefs that children have uh because that's what this is all about it's about children and how they view the world they're thereby analyzing if humans are naturally um religious or not he also gives as an example that um children up to a certain age believe in um a lot of fantasy like they believe that their parents know everything there is and that for example if you uh, if you show your parents um a box they know exactly what is inside that box only after a certain age they learn that their parents don't know everything after all and just like that they have uh, certain perceptions which are natural to their um to to, the, to their curiosity that's what the research is actually about it never proves or establishes as this guy claims that humans are naturally certainly religious yeah I, I i'm not sure if the exact paper that you're you're referring to i've probably just not because i've not done a whole lot of reading about this but my understanding is similar to what you described that just that um sort of within our cognitive faculties built into them um it is is this propensity to sort of um come up with teleological explanations right mm -hmm. so that you know there's a very famous experiment where there's a kind of cartoon of triangles moving around a screen and children and adults alike but predominantly children are prone to explain what's going on with the triangles in terms of you know like triangles bullying the other triangle and stuff like that and uh you know to attribute sort of like these desires and things like that and this is quite a famous um experiment you know demonstrating the, the types of te some of the types of teleological explanations that we that we come up with and i think um I think that this is fairly robust for psychology, but uh, you know, obviously, I, I, I need to do do some more digging, and um, uh, and yeah, I, th I think that that is alleged to, to be the explanation about why cross culturally people would, you know, sort of begin to attribute minds and things to various, you know, um, uh, uh, natural processes that are taking place because they're postulating various kind of teleological explanations and things that are so. So I, I agree that the the particular content right of what that mind is, whether it's like uh, wh whether it's Allah or the Christian God, whether it's you know various ancestor spirits, whether it's kind of some nature deity or something, um, I mean that's not built into human nature as it were. What's built into human nature is this propensity to explain things in terms of you know like a like a personal agent doing things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, yeah. There's, and there's a lot of ways to. I mean, here's. Um... This is just my video that I published uh, a few um, weeks ago in which I analyzed that the, the, the guy's name is Justin Barrett and um, he uh, analyzes the issue and he basically, I mean, it, it, uh, I, I've, I pretty much summarized uh, the certain points that are that in this research are not in agreement with Daniel Kikichu's claim here. But um, children were asked whether their mother would know the contents of a box in which she could not see. Children aged three believed that their mother and God would uh, always know the contents. But by the age of four, children start to understand that their mothers are not all-seeing and all-knowing. However, children may continue to believe in all-seeing, all-knowing supernatural agents such as a God or gods. Um, 
there is a different part. Barrett admits that children do not come out of the womb e equipped with religious ideas. Uh, for example, parental testimony that confidently attests to divine agents will reinforce beliefs, while post-industrial settings that encourage reflective thinking will tend to foster atheism, and so on. So uh, it, it doesn't really support your argument, boys. <laughs> Uh, all right. and, and that's also if it's if it's true that having religious belief um is a part of human nature then that would mean that when you cease to believe in um religious beliefs you no longer have a human nature right if that if that's actually true so yeah, you would, yeah. you'd like see i mean and that's i mean maybe he'd be okay with that because you know then it's like yeah that's why we can kill the atheist i've just given the strongest islamic argument for uh you know killing uh killing atheists or something like that but um fantastic good <laughs> i mean that's obviously sort of absurd that people cease to be human at once yeah, they yeah. um lose religious belief yeah and, and and you could argue that a lot of things are natural to humans because humans also come equipped with uh the <laughs> i guess with the, with the desire to uh take care of their uh, own you know self preservation at any cost and learn through us uh, through upbringing through society how to actually interact with humans in order to create a uh, a, a healthy environment and all that yeah. uh and, and they would tr they humans have humans feel pleasure from um you know killing or harming others because it is yeah. a part of self-preservation uh you could now argue that it's totally okay for you to go around and just you know massacre people uh, and do whatever you want for your own good but that's simply not how it works just because exactly. it is somewhere in your nature that doesn't mean it's right yeah yeah uh yeah why am i, I here? yeah Huh. Did you not click the um, audio checkbox when you reshared your screen or something? No, I did. What in the hell is going on here? <laughs> uh, unmute. Okay, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't know why I did that. This would support laws about and laws and naturally religious and believe in God. This would support laws about and laws and policies that prioritize religious perspectives, but atheists will deny the scientific facts here or they won't practice skepticism about liberal secular claims that all people are born as atheists and it's only indoctrination that makes people religious and therefore two wrongs two lines i'm sorry yeah this that's not at first off that's not a scientific fact uh if you say that then you just really have no idea what scientific fact is supposed to mean here or what science is and uh yeah i don't know just just go ahead <laughs> Therefore, religion should be barred in all matters of governance. Grenade out liberal secular claims that all people are born as atheists and it's only indoctrination that makes people religious, and therefore religion should be barred in all matters of governance. The people who propose this religion should be barred from all matters of governance were not uh, people who were, who were uh, staunch atheists who said, no, religion is uh, not natural, religion is imposed on us, therefore we need to get rid of it and establish secular systems. No. Christian people themselves yeah. supported yeah. the idea of secularism, of separating state matters from religious matters. Jesus himself. They... <laughs> Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Who's, whose face is on that coin? That's what Jesus says. The prophet yeah. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it it was it was not atheists who came up with the idea. You know what? Let's uh, take religious religion completely out of government because religion is not natural. No, that's I mean. It, that is not that is simply not how it happened that's not how it evolved that's not the history of secularism that's not the history of anything that's simply inaccurate it's bullshit uh <laughs> i don't know what else to say about this um the idea there was that if you uh let religion rule over society it will lead to um you know to discriminations based on uh, the mere fact that people have different religious uh, ideas and beliefs and that they may at some point challenge the religious beliefs held by uh, the government or by the people in charge, which will lead to societal unrest again. I mean, this is one of the main factors why um, secularism is was proposed. It's not, it, it's not at all what he claims it is. And this is just terrible. It's horrible. I don't know what else to say. It's horrible, man. It's embarrassing. <laughs> It's stupidly embarrassing. How does this guy have a, an education in this field? How does this guy claim to be 
and an ex you know you know what the problem is if we were sitting here and talking about this now and he came into the room to everything that we have just said to us breaking down his arguments and pointing out how ridiculous they are if he came in here his first the first thing he said would be what is your degree i have an education in philosophy who are you to talk be quiet that would be his response i know it so that's what he does yeah well i mean i th i think what's a shame right is that if in order to actually get through to him you'd have to do all this you'd have to do all this kind of like cognitive coaching right because clearly there's there's all this other stuff going on so it'd be like you know it's all right you're very smart you're you know you'd have to do all this stuff just to get him to like calm down and listen to something so here's okay. do you think that this could be a problem for something that you've said you know just to get him just for one second to, to be like yes that's a problem and to start changing his beliefs <laughs> maybe that's the approach that we need Maybe you should, Nathan, you should jump into the Dawa seat and you should try this new approach with the Muslim apologists. Well, it depends on the context. I mean, the one time I went, I called into EF Dawa, um, I did manage to get um, Hamza to say some things that sort of were, were a bit funny and kind of conflicted with, with some yeah. of the things you're saying about Christianity. But Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It would be funny if you confronted Muhammad Hijab and said, Muhammad Hijab, it's okay. I acknowledge that you are intelligent and you are strong. Yeah, <laughs> but don't you think there is a problem? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're a very masculine man. You could be a sheikh. You could be a desert warrior. <laughs> <laughs> Another example is promiscuity natural for women? If so, that fact would support the political ideology of sexual liberation, legalizing abortion, etc. But a ton of scientific evidence says that no, women are not naturally promiscuous and there's a great deal of psychological and societal harm that comes with female promiscuity. But what is the response from proponents of a secular... In the incel community, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> is, is there scientific evidence? Is this the consensus, dear, dear Daniel Kikachu? Or do you want us to... Uh, to I, I did this. I, I didn't. I, I think I there's a lot of evo psych about it, and the but a lot of that evo psych is very questionable. You know, it's like back on the plains of Africa, bro. You know, like yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I actually, I didn't. I completely forgot that he makes this point, so I didn't uh, prepare anything for that. But as he was, as I was listening to it, I quickly went on uh, Google Scholar. And on the other, um, you know, pages that you use to look up uh, research papers and, uh, and and search for women in promiscuity, and um, you will be surprised, or maybe not surprised, to see that um, a lot of evidence actually says that women are naturally promiscuous, and uh, even more so than men in many ways. So um, again, no evidence that he brought. He just said, "Well, plenty of evidence does this." Well, anybody can say that. Where is your actual evidence for that? And is this scientific evidence? Is this scientific research? Yeah, as, as far as I'm aware, the, the there are some people, as I said, who tend to be evolutionary psychologists who will talk about women um, being less happy when they're more promiscuous, but they tend to be the sort of people who are going to appear on, you know, like Jordan Peterson or um, maybe, what, what's that guy, Modern Day Wisdom, Chris something or other, I've forgotten, no, Chris Williamson, but, you know, the, and they'll talk about the dating scene and stuff, and these people will be like, uh, you know, offering the, these evolutionary explanations about, about but often that, that there's there's a lot of problems with what they're doing there right it, it according to me at least it's it's not that much better than what young earth creationists do when they start saying you know well god put the tree rings there to kind of um you know test people with faith they're just speculating about um stuff that happened in our evolutionary past to explain various things in their experience often not this this isn't what the whole field is or something but this is what mm -hmm. a lot of the, pe the people coming to those conclusions do and they just don't have testable hypotheses in any way right they they don't have any empirical evidence for the types of things that they're saying and then they don't actually have any ways of testing those hypotheses so they're just yeah, you know yeah. completely unfalsifiable but I find this comment very funny. I just saw somebody here uh, make a comment. Random bro said, "Buddy said he uses Google Scholar." Ha ha ha. Uh, Random bro, I don't think I don't think you know what Google Scholar is. Uh, you might use that as a joke to say, oh, look, you're a Google Scholar. Go to Google Scholar." But Google Scholar is an actual uh, platform that you uh, can use freely to access a lot of uh, research, a lot of professional academic research. So 
while joking about uh, something here, you are actually kind of um, revealing that you have no clue what you are talking about. I would suggest, I mean, maybe, maybe go on Google Scholar and, and Google Google Scholar and then go on there and research for a topic that you like and you will be redirected to a lot of academic uh, research. Uh, I'm just saying this because I want to be uh, nice to you and save you from further embarrassment, dear random bro, in the future. Thank you. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see. Worldview. That's slut shaming. That's misogyny. You're just an incel. The conversation is shut down as I mean, that is what I said in fairness. <laughs> But I'm not just trying to shut down the conversation. Like I like having these conversations with these people to try and change their minds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Typically investigate the anti-liberal position. Yet when you poll atheists, 94% of atheists, according to Pew, think casual premarital sex is acceptable. Nearly 90% believe that abortion should be legal. You have near consensus. <laughs> Wait, wait a minute. Wait a second. Yes, according to Pew, when you poll atheists, 94% of atheists, according to Pew, think casual premarital sex is acceptable. <laughs> so that's the problem. <clears throat> that's the problem. So many atheists think that casual premarital sex is uh, okay, is acceptable. And why do why are atheists doing this? Why, yeah, are they why doing would that? they? The, 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 this to me shows a complete sort of lack of self-awareness right because he can't see that the only reasons that he has for um you know thinking that it would be immoral are his religious reasons which are not shared by atheists like once that goes if that's not there why why would you know what's wrong about it right like what yeah yeah you would have to establish that um that atheists are um bound and obligated to abide by um, scientific research, uh, that they all must agree on it. And then you must demonstrate that uh, we actually have plenty of scientific uh, evidence, which clearly establishes without doubt that casual premarital sex is actually terribly harmful. Uh, I, I skipped a lot of factors there, but, he, but that's how you could start. But he did none of those things. Yeah. Man, that's just so dumb. It is so stupid. Nearly 90% believe that abortion should be legal. You have near consensus from atheists on things that are not only not supported by science, but actually glaringly contradict. Did he say anything about why science, why abortion is bad and atheists still agree with it? Yeah, I don't, I don't think that? so. But um, I mean, <clears throat> I was focusing on the chat a little bit, so. I might have missed if he did. I don't think he did. Everyone in the chat, tell me if I missed it, but I don't remember establishing in any way whether you agree with it or not that that we have scientific evidence that abortion is actually very bad and that therefore, you know, atheists should not uh, be okay with abortion. Uh, I'm not arguing against it. I'm just saying I, don't, I didn't hear it. So how how is how is this suddenly relevant? <laughs> predict the scientific evidence. No skeptics, no skepticism from atheists, though. Another example, pornography. The secular belief is that viewing porn is natural and nothing to be ashamed of. Nowadays, government programs are even... <laughs> is, that the, is that the secular belief? In the... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know lots of... Um... I know lots of secular people who, for example, you know, take issue with porn saying it exploits women or yes. know, it's, it's uh, monetarily exploitative. Or there are some who t uh, who take the position that it's you know unhealthy to consume lots of it because it's either going to be damaging to your relationship or your psychology. I mean, these aren't necessarily my views, but um, it's not that there's this just consensus, right? Of there, um, there are organizations, movements which advocate for a non-religious um, opposition to pornography because it is depicted as um, you know abuse and harmful to human to to human uh, you know mental health and all that, uh, not based on any religious principles at all. Uh, advocated for by um, atheists and secular people. So this again is a completely false claim. Yeah. Another one. Yeah. Okay. Fine. 
and including pornographic material in grade school curricula. But in nowadays, government programs... <laughs> Example like citation needed, including <laughs> pornographic... It depends what he means, right? Because he might just mean sex education by that, yeah, which I know yeah. they're against. But I mean, in terms of explicitly like porn, like no one's going around in schools like you know, group Bukaki or something. On those. <laughs> well, I, I remember when I arrived in sixth grade uh, in biology, we watched a video which kind of uh, simulates, uh, you know, um, a man and a woman uh, having intercourse, and then uh, thereby, uh, you know, it, it doesn't actually show a man and a woman. It's like you know, like figures, uh, and then it shows how that leads to uh, pregnancy and birth and all that. Um, I guess that should be seen as pornography, and I, I guess we watched porn in school. I don't yeah, know. right. <laughs> I think that's I think that's how he's using it, and obviously, you know, the less people know about sex, the better, because then sex yeah. can be used as a tool by religion to control people in. Exactly. And, things. and they can marry little children. Yeah. Uh. Viewing porn is natural and nothing to be ashamed of. Nowadays, government programs are even including pornographic material in grade school curricula. Yeah, citation needed. But, yeah. but again, tons of evidence suggests that this is very unnatural. Tons of evidence. Damn it. <laughs> Don't worry where, about it, bro. Where is the tons Trust of evidence? Me, bro. I've got it all. It's all back here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you saying I'm not trustworthy? <laughs> and, and again, and again, there is the whole claim, the, the whole appeal to nature. It's not natural. So what? If, even if you establish that, so what? But atheists express no skepticism in these issues and overwhelmingly believe that porn is morally acceptable. <laughs> atheists, where's your skepticism? It's over there in the corner. I put it <laughs> exactly. <back> there. <laughs> It's sitting there. <laughs> it's watching Ooh, porn in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Those who suggest banning porn are branded as irrational extremists and fundamentalists. Uh, really? I don't, I don't know. I don't know about that citation needed again. Yeah. Now the third category, group differences. If groups are fundamentally different, then we usually think it's okay to discriminate. For example, can we have laws that discriminate against blind people when it comes to driving cars? Yes, that's justified because the blind cannot safely drive cars. But can <laughs> we just pause a second, right? Uh, in terms of the claim he's made about if groups are fundamentally different, then we sometimes think it's okay to discriminate. So in the case yeah. of driving, right, eyesight's a relevant feature. But we yeah. don't now think, but it's okay for blind people to kill people, but sighted people can't, ki you know, that sight, yeah. it, it depends what you're discriminating about, right? So, so yeah, that's yeah, going to be yeah. relevant. Um, and then the factor here in question are for, um, you know, bl blind people not driving is that uh, if blind people drive, that uh, will have um, severe consequences for uh, the, the individual, the environment, other people, and so on, which is why it is a necessity to, uh, to restrict this. Please come and uh, make the same argument for, I don't know, banning, uh, <laughs> banning apostasy, for example. <laughs> well, it, the the direction he's going is gonna is is he's gonna say that there are these um, specific differences between men and women, for example, such that we should legislate these these differences between men and women. But I mean, in the in the case of um, so so in the in the case of driving right, it's clear to see how someone who can't see is going to be incapable of driving safely. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if we're talking about say differences in in populations of men and women between IQ distribution, well, that's a distribution with a lot of overlap. So if you're going to say, so women shouldn't be in the workforce because their, their average IQ is lower than that of men or something. I mean, are you also advocating that men whose IQ is below the average of women shouldn't be, you know, who are on that distribution curve, men who share the same features as women in that, in that regard, or men, you know, men whose testosterone levels are lower than women shouldn't be able to participate in the workforce. Men who have less androgen receptors and higher testosterone counts, should they not be able to participate in the work? So there's all these questions that are going to be raised by this kind of essentialist um, account of differences between the, the genders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Against Canadians on this? No, because there's no relevant difference between Canadians and other groups when it comes to driving. So purported facts about group differences affect our understanding of discrimination.
Are men and women different enough to justify gender specific discrimination or unequal treatment in certain domains? All traditional religion. A huge slippery slope is going to come here. Religion, religious systems say yes, but atheists argue this is misogyny and hatred of women. What? Wrong atheists do not <laughs> argue that. Wrong, false statement. Again. And he's like, he's like, why, right? It's because you're advocating <laughs> for beating women. That's why. Yeah, that, that's, yeah. I guess I say that's that's bad, right? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to say you can't pick out a relevant feature between men and women that yeah. makes it okay to beat up women. Yeah. Why? They claim it's because men and women are functionally the same in terms of IQ, psychology, physical capacity, emotional tendencies, etc. Uh, wrong. Atheists do not claim that, and number one. Um, secondly, they have different explanations why. Exactly, yeah. You can you can say that there are differences in IQ and explain those differences right in, in, in different ways. I, I, this isn't what I believe, but one candidate explanation could be that women receive, yeah. you know, different nutrition or something than men. And so they, you know, they, they have different IQ. Uh, we should try to pause less, although it's just too hard because of this of the subject matter here. Of course, plenty of science says otherwise. So where is the skepticism from atheists? Further I think a lot of scientific research says that women have, uh, you know, breasts, for example. Uh, but unfortunately, atheists do not want to accept this. Where is their consistency? Where is their skepticism? So, you know. <laughs> a lot of scientific research says the moon has not split in two. But where's your skepticism? Muslims? <laughs> <laughs> aggressively fabricates facts. The liberal consensus, for example, is that the only reason that women don't have as much success in math, science, and business as men is that women are subject to discrimination. It is not because of IQ distribution or women having less testosterone that makes them less competitive. No, it's because they're unfairly discriminated against by men. Which may be a factor, uh, and many people may argue that and have a point but is that what atheists and what the secular establishment really thinks and yeah, is that relevant to how atheists are uh, inconsistent i don't know his, <laughs> his use of o is only because of is like doing a lot of work yeah. there right because you, yeah. you can you can say well there are these iq differences so that so you know it's perfectly expected that we'd see a bit of a difference between you know the success of men and women in various fields because you're going to get more men who have these like you know extremely high iqs or whatever but um i mean you could say still the the actual distribution of men and women that we have you know achieving this success doesn't reflect the iq differences so there's these extra factors like um you know prejudice and things like that that have been at least historically at work in certain fields but nathan you don't know what you're talking about because uh chanel over there believes that uh that we should uh, treat everybody equally because uh of those reasons and therefore you agree with that too and you are being inconsistent here i'm sorry yeah. And where's my skepticism? Where's your skepticism? <laughs> I, like, I love this phrase, you know, the, rhetor <laughs> the rhetorical phrase at the end of every point that he makes. Where's your skepticism, atheists? Like, <laughs> I, I dropped it somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> that is fabricating facts about causation to support a political... What a big irony. That's what he's doing all the time. Right. ideology while ignoring all the contravening scientific evidence. But this is not... Oh, sorry, just um, to mention as well, the thing about... Um, the the testosterone stuff is really interesting like about whether testosterone actually um how accurately it predicts you know how how competitive and stuff people are going to be because there's in in biology in biology people's first firstly testosterone in the blood is not necessarily representative of um the amount of hormone that's affecting you know various like organs and things and what's going on because that depends on the androgen receptors in cells but also the the testosterone the the kind of causal explanation is can be backwards because sometimes testosterone count um you know if there's like a more aggressive male or something for example who's around in some species i don't know about humans testosterone account then goes amount then goes down and then if you remove you know that more aggressive male from the environment then testosterone um in the blood goes up and stuff so so the order of explanation there isn't that you know the fish is like becoming um the, the fish is like naturally competitive because of the the testosterone or something it's 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 actually the other way around so there's a, there's a lot of nuance in the biological debate right about what exactly you 
there's a lot of these folk notions, right, that hang around of the, the connections between things like testosterone and competitiveness, and then how that justifies, you know, the behavior of um, toxic Wall Street culture or something, right? Um, like, well, it's just testo testosterone dictates that they behave that way. So, but actually, what's going on is very complex, and you can't you can't just reduce it all to like. Uh, yeah, yeah. I wanted to say something about this, but I just got distracted by the fact that uh, I just checked the lines that I made, and I, I swear I didn't cheat here. Uh, but <laughs> oh, God, it's too bright. Oh, there we go. Oh. I counted uh, 33 <laughs> or 34 or something like that, and we are 12 minutes into it. And <laughs> because scientific facts alone are not enough to bring people to a moral consensus about laws and social policy. You don't say. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, what you need, the ingredient that you're missing is the belief that some guy called Muhammad, you know, dictated the Quran <laughs> in a cave. That, that'll sort it all out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But this is not surprising because scientific facts alone are not enough to bring people to a moral consensus about laws and social policy. Wow. Of course, of course, atheists as proponents of this secular system cannot admit that this is what is happening. And that <laughs> what? I mean, that's what we've been saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been saying it for an hour and a half, sorry, not for 12 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Did, did I just hear the right thing? Did, did I just hear what I really heard? Or yes, as did he just really say that? Proponents of this secular Wait. laws and social policy. Of course, of course, atheists as proponents of this secular system cannot admit that this is what is happening. And that's why... A are you kidding me, man? Are you, are you kidding me? Okay, I, I'm sorry. I need to go back to this and uh, listen to, to to what he is actually claiming here. Surprising, because scientific facts alone are not enough to bring people to a moral consensus about laws and social policy. Okay, scientific uh, consensus. Are, is consensus, consensus is not is not enough. Of course, of course, atheists as proponents of this secular system cannot admit that this is what is happening, and that's why atheists are selective. But atheists cannot admit that science alone is not enough to establish. <laughs> and how many atheists have you asked? You know, like <laughs> I'm not. A, I'm not. I, I mean, I, I think there are probably some, but in, in terms of naming one, Whoa. right? I can't actually name one that actually thinks that. Though I have. Thinks... Ne I have never. I have never heard of any. A single atheist. I've never heard of an atheist who actually believes that. I've never heard of an atheist who does not want to admit that science alone is not enough to, you know, come to certain, um, you know, laws and moral conclusions and all that. It is. Oh my! This is so ridiculously idiotic. This guy. Did this? Does this guy ever sit down and actually think about the things that he says and holds? I mean, he, his 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 title for his YouTube channel is Muslim Skeptic. Is does he ever? Where, where, where is, is your skepticism? skepticism? <laughs> <laughs> where where is your skepticism? Where is your uh, basic skepticism, man? Oh my. Are, are there what? Muslims here who are fans of General Gikic? Are they watching this? And do you think that he's right? Do you actually think Daniel Gikic makes sense here? I mean, this is the most idiotic thing that I have heard today and maybe in a long time. What What's this thing he's got going on behind him as well? Is that um, like the name of Allah or something in Arabic writing? It is Allah and then there is a lot of uh, writing and art form. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was a clock at first, and I was like... Yeah. Another example. It was a what? I thought it was a clock at first, like uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. a, a big yeah. tell, telling the time. Um, and, but yeah. Should same-sex marriage be legal? An overwhelming consensus of atheists, 92%, say yes. And if you ask them, they'll say that their support for it is based on the scientific fact that homosexual marriage is exactly the same as heterosexual what the fuck how, are you talking about? How I'm sorry. <laughs> I am sorry, but I sim show me that that based on the scientific fact that be legal. An overwhelming consensus of atheists, 92% say yes. And if you ask them, they'll say that their support for it is based on the scientific fact that homosexual marriage is exactly the same as heterosexual marriage. So 
Okay, over 90% say that uh, <laughs> that homosexual uh, marriage is okay. And if you ask them, they say that this is because uh, it is scientifically established that homosexual marriage is uh, just like heterosexual marriage. Um, I would really like to see the data for that of people actually believing that and saying that as their reasoning for that. Where yeah, is I mean, it? it just, Where's the data? It just seems, I mean, it's just clearly not true, right, in virtue of one being homosexual marriage and one being heterosexual marriage. I mean, both of those are different in virtue of what they are. Like, you know, one is between a man and a woman and one's between a man and a man or a woman and a woman. So they're, di they're at least different in as far as that. I, th I think the point that atheists want to make is that they're not morally different, right? So the point is that, you know, they're both they both can be good and they both can be bad. You can have like, you, you know, the, the things that make it good or bad are going to be the interpersonal relationships between these people and not what their, you know, what their sexes and genders are. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. TPBR said, Daniel's sources, trust me, bro. I mean, that's what it looks like right now. Really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think we will ever see a source. Of, please, uh, Daniel or anybody else, if you want to back this up and support Daniel's argument here and show me the source <laughs> in which uh, you will find that uh, evidence for that, I would love to see it. And if I see it, I will make a video in which I will say, I apologize. I have to admit that this is actually true. So. <laughs> I mean, he might as well say four out of five dentists agree or something, right? <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, it would be morally wrong to discriminate against same-sex couples. But much evidence shows that homosexual marriage is associated with mental illness, child abuse, domestic violence, etc. But follow that line of reasoning and atheists scream, that's homophobic, that's hate speech, that's extremism, and you will be banned from social media, academia, and the political... Okay, um, he might be right about certain statistics uh, regarding, um, you know, homosexual marriages and how they impact, um, you know, a family. But I don't think that uh, I, I don't think his I don't think his conclusion here again follows from the premises and from from the from the supposed facts that he presented at all. It is uh, a matter that needs that should be addressed, that should be uh, discussed, that should be explored. But again, the entire reason he brings this up is there is a problem, and we bring, if we bring this problem up, then we are uh, banned from social media and blocked from things. So, atheists, where is your skepticism? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> How do you get from that point to that point? It's like... <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like... Um... I don't know. I can't, I can't think of a funny, a funny enough analogy to make. I don't know. Like, I keep, you know, I keep, I keep going to the grocery store and just shouting at grannies that they're stupid or something, and they've kicked me out the store. So, atheist, where is your skepticism? It's like, you know, something like that. <laughs> oh, man. ...domain as a whole. Where is your skepticism on this issue, atheists? Oh, the fourth category... He said it again. Oh, my God. Conspiracy theorists. Atheists have no problem believing that the governments around the world routinely commit election fraud, conduct false flags, falsely revise history in order to support their political regimes, manipulate public health crises to expand control, do political assassinations. But if you accuse the U.S. or Western liberal governments of doing these things, you get blasted as a conspiracy theorist about... What in the world does this have to do with so, the debate topic? I think, I think where it's coming from, right, is something that people who... I, I'm friends with who are sympathetic towards Islam, at least. Um, you know, they're often very concerned about U.S. intervention in the Middle East. And, mm. you know, and there are some legitimate concerns there. Um, but sometimes that can go into, you know, conspiracy theory territory. I mean, there's, there's a lot of dodgy stuff the U.S. has done intervening in foreign affairs. But there can also be, you know, like a, a, as if, you know, everyone in the U.S. conspired in some like Christian conspiracy theory or something to like... Um, you know, damage Islam, and there can be these weird, what I consider to be weird beliefs that ha you know people have about um, political influence and stuff. And I think he's saying, well, look, some of these are true, so 
you know, where's your skepticism about that atheist? Because you don't believe. But I mean, the problem with that is just that a lot of atheists, you know, are sympathetic towards like, yeah, the US, the US government has been pretty dodgy and done some dodgy things. It I mean, it depends on the claim, right? I mean, most yeah. atheists aren't going to agree with you if you go if you're going down like uh, some vaccine skepticism or something or some random, you know, just some some massive conspiracy. But if you're just going to say, yeah, like the US interfered in government elections or hosted, you know, phony elections in various governments to get leaders they wanted in or whatever, then a lot of people are going to be like, yeah, that, they did do that. That's bad. I mean, I, we, we, I just I just had a conversation about that uh, yesterday. Um, it, it's a it's a well known fact that it is part of history of American history uh, that, you know, meddling in international, uh, you know, relationships and all that was done at a point in history, uh, especially during during the Cold War era, lots of stuff was going on. You know, it's, it's all demonstrated, it's all proven. It's, it's quite uh, understandable that today there is still meddling going on in other people's businesses, uh, some justified, some unjustified. It is, is established. Look, I'm an atheist, and I'm uh, saying this. We, and, and and what are we not admitting here? Uh, liberal governments of doing these things, you get blasted as political regimes manipulate public health crises to expand control, do political assassinations. But so that one, the US, manipulate US. public health crises. He's, I think, he's specifically trying to refer to COVID there. Yeah, yeah, a, yeah. And I, and I know, I know, I, know plenty, I have heard of plenty of. I know an atheist, a, uh, a very, you know, staunch atheist who who believes that who even who doesn't even believe that uh that germs cause uh you know problems he doesn't believe in uh in diseases that are like transmitted from one to the other he believes that covid is entirely a man-made um disease and that vaccines are, are meant to control and to debilitate you and all of those things there are lots of people from different uh walks of life and different um worldviews who believe in all kinds of things so um again you might say why do those people who hold those beliefs hold those beliefs why don't they question themselves but you can't sit down and say so atheists um uh, why do you not accept that uh, you know liberal governments uh, are involved in conspiracies? Where is your skepticism? Therefore, atheists are inconsistent. That's simply stupid. Yeah, and and for each of these conspiracy theories he commits himself to, you you can kind of run it the other way, right? You can kind of say, well, look, this conspiracy theory is clearly wrong, but Muslims believe it. So Muslims, where is your skepticism, right? It, and that's yeah. going to be a problem for each of these that he comes up with. Yeah, yeah where is your skepticism, man? Where is your skepticism? Western <sighs> liberal governments of doing these things, you get blasted as a conspiracy theorist about uh, uh, conspiracy theorist or even a disinformation agent who needs to be silenced. Based this is very funny because he and um, maybe not he, but many of his fellow believers and fans frequently accuse people like me of, right. uh, of being um, agents uh, or being fu secretly funded by uh, Israel <laughs> and, <laughs> and by Israel and by uh, governments and organizations. Uh, I, there was just recently um, a YouTuber who made a video in which he claimed that I and other ex-Muslims, we receive large fundings from uh, the Israel lobby and from the Israeli government. And I'm just here thinking, dude, I don't... I, I can't get, I, I need new equipment. I can't get anything. I wish I had Israeli funding. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. Oh my God. This is so ridiculous. <laughs> Basically, any conspiracy theory about non liberal regimes, no problem. But conspiracies about liberal regimes like the US, we can't have that because that undermines any consensus about the goodness of the liberal world order. And Where is your skepticism on these issues? Okay, um, summary, so it was 14 Well, yeah, minutes. I think he ha he goes over, I think, a bit here. Um, I don't think this is the end of his oh. speech yet. Yeah. Can I just finish the last paragraph? Uh, we'll do the same for T-Jump in terms of giving an extra 20 seconds. Right. Go for it. So these are four areas where atheists don't practice the same skepticism they have for religion. It's not just that atheists have different values, and that's what's causing the difference. It's well, that that's what I think it could be. <laughs> That's precisely what I think it could be, but I mean, yeah. yeah. On false facts that support their liberal secularism and shut down everything that contravenes it. This is selective skepticism. 
Thank you. Very okay, so um, that was a 15 minute, uh, almost 15 minute uh, opening statement about why atheism, or 10 minutes, I don't know, why, why atheists are uh, inconsistent. And um, there is no, there is no proper argument here, which um, there, there are no proper premises here, which comes to the conclusion that atheists are inconsistent. I mean, I could argue against it if the arguments actually followed, if the, if, if he actually did establish. Uh, proper premises and conclusions to argue why atheists are inconsistent. He simply did not. It is entirely full of multiple, of so many fallacies, entirely disconnected all over the place. And if you try to put it together, as you <laughs> actually did, it, it is incredibly stupid and simply wrong. Yeah, he, he provided one invalid argument, um, the ma vast majority of the premises for which were, were cl quite clearly false. Um, in terms of what he said, it seems that his main point is just to claim that atheists only believe the scientific facts and then mm -hmm. to point to facts that atheists that aren't scientific, that atheists believe and kind of say, haha, gotcha. Where is the skepticism atheists over and over again? You know, yeah. Um, no, no, that, that's actually funny. His entire entire opening speech is built on one argument, which is uh, atheists only accept scientific facts. That is already completely wrong. Therefore, I'm sorry, your entire opening speech is complete nonsense. <laughs> I, I mean, that's all that needs to be done again. Yeah, I mean, there's there's numerous other problems with what, with what he said, but yeah, that's the main the main one. But you wanted to say more. Go ahead. I interrupted. You. Well, no, so I, like I was, just, I was just gonna say for for the several thing, you know, the, the several kind of claims that he points to, right, to say, well, here's something that atheists believe. Often they're just a mischaracterization of what atheists do actually um, think about those things, or sometimes they're just, they're, you know, it was just a false claim, right? Like the ones about women's mental health in the workplace and things like this. I mean, wh where he's just saying, look, I've got all the statistics, bro, that stacks that that backs up what I'm saying, but. I mean, none of that. Were, none of this was substantiated. It's not clear that any of it was true. Um, mm -hmm. So it's not clear that the, these even are examples of things that I, atheists believe, and and things that are in fact, you know, like scientific facts that atheists get wrong or something. It's, I actually just, did one thing um, as I was watching it. Uh, I th there is later um, during the during the debate there is a point where Daniel repeats this whole idea that um, atheists uh, consensually agree. He says there is an atheist, uh, co there's consensus among atheists that abortion should be illegal in all cases. T-Jump then jumps in and says, oh, that, that sounds, that doesn't sound right to me. That can't be true. Uh, no, okay, he says, he, he says precisely, Daniel says, 87% of atheists agree that uh, abortion should be legal in all cases. And Tijam says, that doesn't sound right. I don't think that's really true. Is it all? And Daniel uh, insists on it and says, no, it's, it's definitely, yeah, I gave you the source. It's 87% uh, of atheists agree that abortion is uh, okay in all cases. So since he argued so firmly, I wanted to go into the research that he was referencing, which is a um, a Pew research. You have to zoom the, in one more if you can. Just and see. look at the actual data. This is the research that he's actually referencing. So what happened is T-Jump said it can't be uh, in all cases, 87%. And Daniel Kikichu insisted, it. no, it is in all cases. Here is what's actually happening. Of atheists who were polled, 87% agreed Abortion should be legal in all slash most cases. It says all slash yeah, that's most very cases is very different from saying all cases. If you because yeah, I would down, answer yes to that, and I, yeah. I might answer no to the all cases, right? And I might answer yes to all slash most. And look, it is even broken down here. I mean, you don't even have to look for atheists eighty seven percent all or most, and then. Here is it is broken down into legal yeah. in all cases and legal in most cases. Now let's see what uh, that is. In all cases is fifty percent. In most cases is thirty seven percent. Those two together are eighty seven percent. Boom. <laughs> this is just one of those things that he confidently uh, comes here and um, 
and argues and says, no, this is right, love. Just, I give you the evidence. You just, you're just making things up. That's what he says. But if you look at the actual evidence, it is completely wrong. He's misrepresenting it very clearly. He's completely misrepresenting it. And this is just one example of many where uh, Dan Likikichu repeatedly does this. He goes on debates, makes these confident claims. And if you actually look at the data, it's not right at all. What are the numbers for Muslims there, by the way, just out of curiosity? Uh, 55 in most, all slash most, is that? Wait a minute, what? Muslims? 55? So look, it's not even clear that being a Muslim actually really <laughs> guarantees, you know, the kind of conclusion he wants people to get to. Him. I think this is, uh, this is about Muslims in America, I think. And yeah, <laughs> Muslims in America, 55% of Muslims in America agree that abortion is, should be legal in all or most cases. Wow. Daniel Hakikachu, um, w Muslims, where is your <laughs> skepticism? <Yeah. laughs> where is your skepticism? Where is your consistency? I didn't even pay attention to this. It's a good catch. That's that is funny, dude. <laughs> His solution is Islam. See here. Wow. Yeah. Right. Wow. Wow. This, this is... But of course, it's the infection of the liberal mind virus. Yeah. Yeah. Has, uh... yeah. Liberal. It's very funny. I, I had a discussion with him before, um, <laughs> in which I uh, asked him why he lives in America. Because he like depicts America and liberalism right. as this behemoth, and uh, and like it's evil, and Islam is the solution to all the problems. And I asked him, "Where do you live?" And he's like, "In America." And then I kept asking him, "Why are you not moving to an to, a, to an Islamic country?" And he kept offering different uh, excuses why. And one of the, one of them was, uh, "Well, because I know, where am I supposed to go if I move to Saudi Arabia?" Uh, Liberalism has an impact. Liberalism has them all in their in their grip, and they can't even properly, you know, exercise Islamic laws because then the liberal uh, uh, powers will, you know, like uh, interfere and and all that. That's why that's why I can't move to Saudi Arabia. You know, <laughs> but but and then and then you choose to live in America, the ultimate evil. Yeah, so. right. <laughs> exactly. It's like if you, if you put if you put them all on a scale of sort of like you know most Islamized country to kind of least if if Islamized is even the right word you know it's like you're not going to be yeah. pointing at America at the end of the, you're going to be pointing to one of those. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, any country that is uh, Muslim is would be a better choice on your scale than America. But you say, well, those countries are just not perfect Islamic. Therefore, you know, I am in I'm here in this ultimate evil. I'm in hell. Yeah. What am I supposed so to what do? what happens to your consensus though? Because it's supposed to be that when the country becomes Islamic, you know, when, when everyone is a Muslim, that then you get this this political consensus, right? And it, and yeah. you just get the truth, and it, yeah, all your yeah. problems go away. Yeah, yeah. no, no that's that's why. I mean, if uh, in Saudi Arabia, for example, the majority is Muslim, and therefore they all have uh, consensus, and they're uh, consistent and skeptical. Therefore, Saudi Arabia is a perfect Islamic state, uh, of course. But unfortunately, because of liberalism, it's like you know, liberalism doesn't right. want it to. To, to to be consistent that's the problem <laughs> man 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 uh this was i don't i, don't, I didn't realize we are two, uh, we have been live for two hours already yeah yeah uh, this is just so stupid i don't know i, I occasionally I, I, when i'm listening to what he says right it's it's so stupid that i have this sort of moment where i think like, why am I taking this so seriously? You know, like, I, like I try and I'm like moving all the gears in my mind, trying to like make sense of what he's saying, come up with, and then I just have these moments where I look at myself, like, what the hell are you doing? Like, that was just ridiculously dumb. It <laughs> That's what we did. Well, he, here is the issue. Um, you and I, we sit here. People sit here and watch this, and uh, I'm, I'm sure plenty of people who are not Muslims uh, watch this debate and have similar reactions and think, what the hell are you talking about, man? This is so ridiculously idiotic. But uh, the people of his mindset, the Islamists and the Muslims who follow him, they think that he makes a lot of sense. They think he is actually really, really good, and he destroys right. us. They, they, they think that he wipes the floor with uh, us and with T-Jump and all the others, and he destroys and humiliates us and all that. That's that, that's what they think. I mean, and then you were, and then that makes me sit down and think. All those people take him so seriously, although he's clearly full of crap. 
should I now sit down and worry about that and therefore try to show people that he does not make sense at all? Or should I just think, hey, those people are, I'm sorry, very stupid, even in very large numbers. And it's just, it's just not of my concern anymore. So. Yeah. Or, or yeah, just very, there, there's something going wrong there. I mean, yeah. I, <laughs> Uh, it's and and it's all the you know the, this emphasis on the humiliation and stuff you know like you say the mopping the like they really want it to be almost it's almost like sexually perverse right it's like they want to see the opposition just humiliated and destroyed yeah. in this way and they want their their heroes to be these people who are you know super masculine and strong and all those things this is actually why I it probably won't ever happen in in reality now and I I I might need um, knee surgery because I've got like a screw that's loose or something but. Um, like I do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, right? And Mohammed Hijab does Brazilian Jiu Jitsu because like, he has this really cringy video as as a white belt where he's like the fight the fight is on and there's this sort of like um, music in the background and uh, and it's, it's it's super cringy to watch for me. But I always thought it would be really funny to have like a grappling match with Mohammed Hijab and like absolutely dominate him, but wearing something like really gay. Because that would it would just upset the <laughs> it would it would upset you know like the, this kind of idea of that you know the, these people have to be so masculine and strong and stuff so much to just to see him getting like physically dominated but by someone <laughs> who was like performing as a raging homosexual. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a funny idea. That's, a, that's a, you should think about doing that. Well, I'd, I'd love to, if, but I don't know how to <laughs> quite how to set it up. The same with like, uh, you know, um, the, the grape eating guy. What's his name? Um, <laughs> Ali Dawa. Ali Dawa. Yeah. 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 Oh, you actually tried to review by debate with him. And, uh, <laughs> and... <It's> so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> What's the problem? Why are these Muslim apologists so so terrible? Is it bro? Is it? <laughs> it's like this all. The, it's like so. You know, it's like so on edge as if. Yeah. it's like chill out like, take a deep breath yeah 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 it's funny yeah um i don't know if we have time to go further into tgm's opening speech although i really wanted to hear more of it but maybe we can just have a little a glimpse so do you have any do you have time you want uh yeah on? i do i don't have any time stamps though to um but yeah feel free to jump around if there's things in your mind that you want to yeah very much for that opening statement daniel and debates on welcome and example Next. I never talked about the fact that my face is on here on the stream as well. Uh, I never even. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's funny. Who's, um, the, who's that guy that you have? You debated him yet? That strange uh, fellow is uh, some person called uh, the Muslim apologist, and uh, he insisted that I am scared of him, which is why I will never debate him. So I contacted James and said, "Hey, James, please arrange a debate <laughs> between him and me." And then he was like, uh, "Okay, I'll get back to you." Um, he said, apparently, the Muslim apologist said, I'll get back when I'm ready. Then he got back, and finally we arranged it, and we will have a debate next week. So that will be very nice. interesting. And the topic will be, is Islam dangerous? Yeah, so. Next week, apostate prophet and Muslim apologists debate whether or not Islam is harmful. You don't want to miss that one. Hit that <laughs> subscribe button. And with that, we're going to kick it Teach over. Teach fucking Islam. yawn. It's like <laughs> yawning great. <right. laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks for inviting me on. As always, appreciate being here. Uh, he probably thinks, "What the hell am I getting into here? Like, what, what, why did I agree to this?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I I just always find it funny, like TJ's facial expressions and things. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just you know, uh, James is like, you don't want to miss that next week. He's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, he's not doing it deliberately. Like Look, look, look at, look at. Thanks for inviting me on. As always, appreciate being here. Uh, I, I have no idea how pretty much anything he said has to do with the topic. Like, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm not the other atheist. If your argument is that some, <laughs> isn't that a fantastic, uh, fantastic um, beginning to a response to everything Daniel just said? <laughs> it is, but the but the problem is that then the, the, what the move that happens dialectically, right, is to say, well, the reason he doesn't understand what he's saying is because of a comprehension issue with him, and he's stupid. Oh yeah, and that's why he doesn't understand, rather than it being because I've just said a bunch of gibberish for like. <laughs> but but atheists I agree. Yeah. Are inconsistent, like, duh, atheists are people too. Hashtag, people too. Uh, but I, in the context of a god, they're not adding any extra skepticism. 
So, for example, I wrote an epistemology, a theory of knowledge. Um, to summarize, it's conceptual claims require conceptual evidence, empirical claims require empirical evidence, and metaphysical claims require metaphysical evidence. I apply all claims to that exact same standard, including all the things you listed. Uh, women, on average, have a bell, cu bell curve lower IQ than men. We know this. Same with physical strength. That's why they don't do as well in like chess and win many Nobel Prizes. Like it's a fact. Yeah. By the way, the, the data that they're referencing, uh, I, I guess I could uh, bring it up. The whole uh, difference between um, men and women in terms of IQ and the bell curve difference uh, is not even like a huge deal. The implication of it uh, is not, uh, you know, that men and women are. Um, on significantly different levels in terms of IQ. It's just that the distribution of IQ levels among female population, among the female population, the male population is uh, different, where the male population has a more spread out um, bell curve, whereas the female population, no, or, or the other way around. I'm, I'm not sure how it is exactly. Yeah, I, th I think the, there's maybe more more um, deviation in the in the male curve, but I, th I think, maybe I'm wrong about that actually, but it, yeah, I, that there's a lot of things that can be said about that, right? You can kind of accept yeah. that, and, and and even even asking, well, what is it that psychologists are measuring, right? When they do when they do IQ tests, because the point of an IQ test is obviously to try and get at, you know, th there's this ordinary thing we talk about called intelligence, how in how intelligent people are, and psychologists have tried to come up with some way to quantify how intelligent people are, right? And then, and they've done this by coming up with with various tests, which measure, which is supposed to measure um, cognitive tasks across, um, you know, acro across various different cognitive skills. But but you can even say, well, that's not really what's meant by intelligence. Then there's things about you know people being able to improve their IQ tests over time, improve their IQ over time by, um, you know, taking more tests um, or improve what's supposed to be you know what it's supposed to be measuring general intelligence, right? By um, doing various things like playing strategy games, even. Um, yeah. There's some studies on people, you know, people in uh, like old old people's homes that playing strategy games at, versus a control, and uh, you know that then their IQ scores improving with, without um, that being enough. Re yeah, the, the, that's the thing. Like people like Daniel Hickey to make it look like uh, make it look like women are it's an inner kind of, essence. Yeah, <laughs> it, women are inherently uh, very stupid, and you know <laughs> that there's a huge IQ difference between men and women, and men are just naturally much more intelligent, which is why they should be uh, in charge and doing things. That that's simply not how it is. I find it very funny because he says uh, this is this is extremely funny to me. I study psychology i took a plenty of psychology courses he is here saying that um liberal systems and secular systems and atheists are not consistent because they will never accept these facts i i learned in my psychology courses that there is a difference between uh male and female inte intelligence iq levels right. and I, I learned this in my psychology courses here in america in the liberal, right, in the liberal, liberal America, <laughs> yeah, this is where I learned that. I learned that there that uh, that the findings on IQ levels differ among uh, the among female and male humans, and that there are explanations, various explanations for the causes of these and the implications of these, and uh, that women and men are uh, tend to be more intelligent or less intelligent in different fields, and also that this is not uh, a blanket statement which is true for all women or for all men. It could be that a woman is uh, significantly smarter, significantly more intelligent, and uh, much better in all fields than a random man, for example. So <laughs> I learned this in a psychology course in the evil, corrupt, horrible West in America, man. <sighs> yeah, yeah. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> and it's not even clear. It's and again, in terms of the types of claims he wants to make, right? Suppose that there are, there are these different IQs that are entirely determined by by gender, and um, people are kind of trapped with them or something. And like, how how do any of the claims that he wants to establish um, about like it being okay to beat women or the yeah. types of relationships they should be in or them not going in the workplace? How do they follow from you know getting this this sort of contentious? difference in iq um and, and and how you explain that how even if you get all those things how, how does any of that stuff follow the religious claims well he has to uh, argue that women are less intelligent because um it is the islamic belief as he also believes that muhammad himself said that women are deficient in intelligence right so um how 
Can you argue with that? No. If what you was Mohammed's in... IQ? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he probably wasn't. I mean, Daniel Kikichu is more intelligent than Mohammed was probably. So um, I don't know if you want to take that as a compliment, Daniel, or not. <laughs> but that's the problem, I guess. <sighs> fact. Yes, we know this. It's not. It's not debated. It's, it's a fact. Um, so I don't know what you're even talking about when you're saying we don't acknowledge these facts. We do. Um, Ex exactly. We do. So just not true uh, so if you're saying that atheists some atheists out there are inconsistent well that's great i can't talk about those because i'm not them but i'm not i i'm an atheist i am not inconsistent therefore I, the premise is false atheists or true atheists are consistent skeptics so i don't know i don't know where else to go with that it's pretty simple um, i have a consistent epistemology i apply it to all things therefore atheists are consistent skeptics debunked <laughs> You got it, well <laughs> That's it. That was his opening statement. Yeah, right. And and the, the difference in time as well, you know, like that da Daniel needs to all all the 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 wasting everyone's time with his invalid argument, right? And making all these points and the rhetoric and stuff. And uh, you know, Tom can just express it in in those two minutes. I mean, it, I do I do think that Tom's technically conceding the debate in a way, right? Because it, it yeah. depends if all are atheists consistent skeptics means all atheists, then maybe he's saying, Yeah, yeah sure, some. But I mean, yeah. But his, his response is also sounds problematic because he says no, uh, no uh, atheists are consistent uh, skeptics, so debunked. But I mean, if we go by the same standard, that is also not entirely true, right? But, but uh, he, he yeah. would just be he would be referring to certain atheists, and yeah, they are exactly. consistent. So I j I just don't understand why they even agreed to such a debate title. It's like. What are you supposed yeah, to? Yeah, it's unhelpful. It's, with it. It, yeah, yeah. But... Into the five-minute rebuttal, so each side will get five. minutes. I think really what's going on, right, is that from Daniel's point of view, he just wants to be able to point at any given atheist and yeah. and say that they're irrational, and it, so it, any topic that's going to allow him to do that is, you know, is a is a good one to go to. So so just being yeah, able yeah. to kind of sl sling mud across at the other side and say, yeah, you're irrational, right? Well, he also does this thing, like he debates um, with Christians whether uh, Islam is bad or Christianity. And then the entire point of his opening speech is about how the West is, uh, is, is corrupt and evil and Islam is the solution and Christians don't do anything to tackle the evil, therefore Islam is good. <laughs> and... <laughs> That's, that, that's his entire method. You know. For the opening statements. With that, we we'll also want to say, folks, if you have as well. If you have yeah, so the topic is, are atheists uh, consistent skeptics? So it's referring to atheists as a group, uh, not just is atheists are another group. He jump a consistent skeptic. That wasn't the topic of the debate. We're talking about atheists. And the whole point of... Uh, <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I don't uh, my know. argument. But the the thing is, right, th this is in a way going to undermine when when he says his question, where is your skepticism, atheists, right? Well, who's he addressing then? If mm -hmm. atheists, if, if, so if it's referring to a group, you can't just address a group, right? Like, you know, where's your skeptic? You have to address individuals within that group. And then he'd have to change everything that he's saying and be like, well, so so for those of you who are in, cons and, then, and then the nuance, right? He, he, you introduce the nuance. And then it's not as easy to just stereotype the other group as all being these irrational morons because you have to introduce that nuance into yeah. the way you talk. Well, what's funny is he also says, um, I mean, his argument is that, for example, um, atheists say, or atheists agree yeah. that maximizing freedom is, uh, like they, they all want to maximize freedom. But here is the issue. He contradicts himself because during his uh, presentation, he clearly references the Soviet Union and China and argues that they are atheists uh, and that they are, have these, um, you know, the, the, these these morally evil rules which suppress the population and all that. I mean, you, you are clearly demonstrating here that two primary examples which you present for atheists do not agree and do not argue that maximizing freedom is, uh, you know, necessary but on the other hand you are saying that this is what atheists consensually agree on so you are contradicting yourself here you idiot <laughs> yeah it's it, it's just a mess and it, it, it's partly brought about by the debate topic which maybe could have been something a, a, a bit clearer but i think 
I don't know. You you know, you're not going to, it's difficult to, you need some degree of charity, right, to clarify. So suppose you actually disagree about whether or not atheists are skeptics. You need someone who's just not going to be a, a total ass to you, who's going to be like, yeah, okay, there's some nuance in the question, not someone who's just looking for any opportunity to pounce and make you look ridiculous, or whatever. And that's just not here. Um, yeah. So so that that kind of guides the way, you know, that the, the disagreement has to go. Through. Yeah. Uh, the most funny part about Daniel is his use of strawman arguments when he doesn't like or doesn't know what to answer, said uh, Diana. I, this is, that's why I, I titled this stream The Fallacies of Daniel Kikachu. Because, I, I mean, that, that's all I see whenever this guy debates. And, you know, I have seen Muslim debaters who did a great job. Like, for example, uh, Abdullah uh, Andalusi is a, debate, a Muslim debater. He recently had a debate with uh, Matt Dillahunty about uh, God. And I thought he was quite uh, thorough with his reasoning and uh, was quite consistent and actually uh, seemed to make sense, although I would argue that his conclusions were wrong and uh, some of the information that he presented about uh, the universe and science were were wrong but um you know i can i can say that but with daniel hikikichu here it is just all i hear are fallacies 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 after fallacies nothing is connected and everything is all over the place i don't know yeah that's it right everything we're is just kept yeah. we're just yeah. kept <laughs> And, but it all seems to stem from it, it. It all just stems from this insecurity and need to be like rational yeah. and taken seriously yeah. and viewed in this particular way. It's like yeah. you know, just yeah. chill out. Maybe you could have a good conversation with someone about some yeah. of these things. Yeah, I don't think we need to watch the rebuttal here anymore. We already got. You should it. ask for your money back. I'm don't interrupt. Right. Don't, don't interrupt. Don't interrupt. <laughs> Isn't it, things can cause harm and be moral? Thanks. It's not a thing. Wait, wait. I need to hear that. What was that? Something. No, 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 you can have evidence that something is wrong and there'll be other evidence that contravenes that. And so, okay, this is actually an important point. So when I'm, add, I'm you ask, to ask to the question, I'm trying to argument. answer your question. Yeah, you yeah. ask the question, I'm answering your question. So yeah, don't interrupt. What, what do those, the things you listed, what do they have to do with morality? Because you said atheists is, is have the issue of sexual that... promiscuity a moral issue or not? That's how it has sure. to do with morality. Okay. Sure. Okay. But what is the evidence you provided? You didn't provide any evidence that it's not moral. I look, I'm saying that this is a conversation about facts. So there are plenty of facts to say that sexual promiscuity causes harm. Nice. What and does that have causes... to do with morality? You don't understand how harm has something to do with morality? Uh, not in the context of what you're saying, no. So you said that atheists no, no. have agreement that sexual promiscuity is perfectly moral. I agree. Um, but that has nothing to do with whether or not it's harmful. So things can be moral regardless of whether or not they're harmful. Like, for example, it could be perfectly moral to <laughs> do drugs or whatever, even if it harms you. That's totally fine. It doesn't matter if it causes harm. The fact that something causes harm doesn't make it moral or immoral. It's, it's, it's a well, different... the fact that co something causes harm is evidence that it's immoral. <laughs> Where the hell did you get your philosophy degree from? Who the hell knows about philosophy and argues that uh, by definition it is understandable that if something is harmful, it is immoral? This is this may be your perspective or yeah, yeah. or how you view uh, certain perspectives, but how they how in the world can you argue that that is a that that is a fact that this is unanimous that if something is harmful, it is therefore morally wrong. That's that is stupid. Not everybody has the same perception of morality. Not everybody believes in such a concept. I would say most people don't strictly follow such a system where they say, uh, if something is harmful, then it is morally wrong. You will find that many people follow such uh, ideas. And certainly in Islam, uh, you have this black and white idea of uh, everything that is good is uh, must be done and everything that is bad must be banned. But that is not how the world functions. That is not how the moral framework, how the moral, moral universe functions. And he should know this as somebody who studied philosophy. This is just ridiculously um, stupid. I just, I don't understand how this guy even gets here. Yeah, I, th I think the big issue for him is just how this is going to be in tension with so many other parts of thing uh, of his worldview and things he believes, right? So, like, I I, I, dis I do disagree with T-Jump's moral theory. Um, and, like, personally, I think that things like harm are, are kind of moral properties in, in, in the sense that they met, you know, their presence makes certain things wrong. Mm -hmm. 
But um, the the problem is if you're going if you're going to grant that there are certain properties that make certain states of affairs um, intrinsically right or wrong, you know, like harm, for example. Well, then, if those properties are present where Islam or religion or some things present, well, then that's going to be intrinsically wrong, right? Regardless of what what the opinion of a god is, because it's intrinsically wrong. You know, you're you're saying that that the wrong making property there is the harm that it does. So it doesn't actually matter if a god thinks that it's good. What matters there is that there's harm being caused, right? And that and that's going to be in tension, I think, with a mm -hmm. lot of his, mm -hmm. his his beliefs sort of further downstream about. Um, you, you know about 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 how he grounds morality from Islam, an Islamic point of view. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, and, and the harms that Islam does cause. You know, various wars and whatever. Else. Yeah, he does. He has this expectation um, of of society of people to sit down and say, okay, um, we need to judge what is morally right and what is morally wrong. So, doing drugs is harmful. Therefore, it is morally wrong. Therefore, we should ban it. But that's not how humans function they're that's not how humans uh function how governments operate how people make laws people don't abide by a religious system um you should i mean he should understand is when he talks about secularism by a system where they where they have this strict doctrine where they have this strict dogma where they say whatever harms us is morally wrong and will be banned no humans come to different uh conclusions and make different laws based on many different factors they might say uh smoking is harmful but uh we could we could ban smoking altogether but banning right. smoking altogether might cause uh, economic problems. Might uh, m many people might not agree to it, and they may be very angry, and you know, lots of unrest would be caused. There would be instability. It's people's freedom if they want to harm themselves. Uh, it's, it's none of our business, and so on. There, are, I mean, there are lots of ideas that people uh, employ in order to uh, then come together and make certain laws. It is not just harmful, morally wrong, banned. That's not how society functions or how oh, yeah, are yeah. supposed to function. There's this different question about, you know, like, should we legislate, um, you know, all of the kind of like moral beliefs that we have, right? And I, I certainly wouldn't agree with that. There, yeah. There's all sorts of things that I think are wrong but shouldn't be, you know, legislated against. Like, I think it might be, it, it's wrong for someone to let themselves become really obese or something, right? For example, I mm -hmm. might say that. But I don't think it should be made illegal for someone to become really obese. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's it's it's. I mean, this is actually. Um, we are being uh, skept. We are applying our skepticism and uh, our, you know, our ideas of uh, thinking and judging freely and being free and saying, you know, what I think. I personally think uh, doing, you know smoking uh crack every day is maybe, maybe that's a bad example i don't know <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh as smoking weed 24 7 is uh probably a very dumb idea and will make you a very dysfunctional person but right. you know what's so wrong in that sense. That, but if you want to go and do that i, I i'm what am i going to do you know like, just go to go do it but i would advise against it that's what i would say and that's my and that's where I apply my my ideas of um, individualism and freedom and skepticism and all that because I say I should not be the one who bans that because I know that in the background it will still happen it will not solve anything it will just cause societal problems which will explode you know from uh, different places we will not solve this problem through me cracking down on you on you and banning that I think it's bad but you know educate yourself that's all i can do and here i am not being an inconsistent atheist who uh, abandons his skepticism no i'm just being uh, a rational human being who thinks freely daniel where is your skepticism right and, and something that's sort of i, I this is we're, we're talking to maybe too too much about various but, but but um you know even of the scientific claims that there are, it's worth noting that there are inconsistencies in our best scientific theories, right? So someone who actually believes only and all, only all the scientific facts is actually going to themselves be irrational in a sense, because that all, all sorts of scientific theories actually contradict in various places, because we don't have a complete, that, you know, that those are the places where scientists think, well, there's something curious going on here, right? And I'm going to have to modify my theory in some way. Mm -hmm, it, so. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's also acting like, um, like, all humans are supposed to be uh, moral realists who all agree that there is uh, that um, 
things are morally right or wrong, morally good or evil, and that humans necessarily uh, make those uh, judgments. And if they uh, disagree on those judgments and belong to the same camp, uh, i.e. atheism, then they are being inconsistent. And there's just so much wrong yeah. with that. Yeah, this is th this is a type of philosophy. So I sort of tend to view. I enjoy philosophy sometimes, but I do view philo philosophy um, as sort of removed from the things that it's trying to explain. Right. So when people do what's called meta ethics, which is coming up with, mm -hmm. um, you know, like a philosophy of um, a, a philosophy of moral discourse, basically, the idea is that well, the data point here to explain is just that people talk about you know things being good, things being right or wrong. So you kind of get that for free, whichever theory that you have. Mm -hmm. And then more, some moral realists will come along and say, well, look, my theory makes it the case that there's, you know, these things called truth act propositions which exist and they're, you know, and they're what grounds our moral discourse or something. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a theory about what's going on. Yeah. Um, and it's not like if you reject that theory in favor of some other theory, you can no longer explain how it is that someone can just say, I think that's wrong. It's just that you have a different explanation of what's going on. Rather than there being these entities called truth apt propositions which are involved, you know, instead there's just something else going on, maybe an expression of an emotion or what uh, you prescribing. So it, it doesn't really matter. But the point is that you don't lose, you know, the fact that you can say, yeah, I think that's wrong, right? You can still do that if you're an anti-realist or a realist. So. You're, 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 you're using too many words, Nathan. Just answer the question. Where is your skepticism? Where is your skepticism? Yeah, Where is yeah. your consistency? Yeah. Well, if he wants to pay for me to go to Harvard for a few years. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, that obviously doesn't help. I don't know. And become a Muslim. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, I didn't say it. Proves. <laughs> How? Just explain that one to me. How is the fact that it causes harm indicate that it's immoral? Explain that one to me. Do you think it's harmful to, you know, subjugate a certain Wait, race? Why are you I, asking? No, I'm, I asked you a question. How is it? Harm know, you, you ask a, my turn to ask questions. My turn to ask no, 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 questions. No. Wow, he really doesn't that's get it. That's a dodge. Yeah, that's, that's a, that. That was terrible. I mean, everybody sees that dodge. That's just horrible. My, this is this dude, is like the entire point you've been trying to make, and I'm trying to like because it's something it that's very basic. That How harm is. Have you heard of the is, harm principle? Have you heard of the how yes. harm is calculated in utilitarianism. You're saying that harm has nothing to do with morality. Utilitarianism isn't an object moral system. It's not a moral realist system. So utilitarianism is not a moral system. No, it's a pragmatic system. So so morality says there is an objective right and wrong. Utilitarianism doesn't. So So this this is where I like I, I find TJ Pant entertaining, but I do think he can sometimes introduce confusion for the sake of debate, yeah. right? So yeah, yeah. um so, so in terms of what, in terms of the line of questioning, I do think there's something that's slightly unfair about it, which is going to uh -huh. be that for pretty much any any philosophy, you can always kind of ask, well, how is that thing that right? And and you can just reject whatever explanation someone's going to give you. You know, you can so so say you might accept that mean molecular energy is heat or something, right? And I can say, well, how is mean molecular energy of a gas, the heat, the temperature of the gas? You go, well, look, it's to do with energy and kinetic energy is a type of energy and energy is conserved. Like, yeah, but how, you know, you can, you can just keep asking this how question. There's going to become a point where you're, and a lot of our ordinary language is like this, you know, where mm -hmm, mm -hmm. particularly something like harm being connected to morality. A lot of people are just going to really struggle to provide explanations as to why these things are connected. And then, and I think TJ kind of partly playing on that and then, the second thing is, you know, like this, well, it's a pragmatic system. It's not a moral system. Well, they're not like exhaust. They're not mutually exclusive categories, yeah, right? Yeah. There are, there are, it, it's a normative moral theory. So you might say it's a moral theory and it's a normative. You, you, could, you could say that uh, utilitarianism is a moral theory. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's, I think, it's in that set as well. It's not, yeah. I think his initial objection was that uh, moral, the moral, um, that utilitarianism is not a uh, moral realist or moral objectivist. Uh, theory where you could argue that um right certain forms yeah, of that's... utilitarianism are or are not uh yeah that's that's true if, that, if yeah. that's the where it's coming from in the conversation. yeah yeah you, you could you could argue that he's wrong about that so um you could argue that certain utilitarianist uh perspective utilitarian perspectives may be you know moral objectivist or not uh but then he got into it's not a moral system it's a pragmatic system yeah. which doesn't really make sense it is a moral system uh <laughs> if you i mean by definition uh, but 
if you want to reject the existence of uh, you know moral good and evil and hold on to utilitarianism and say uh, I will advocate for or allow whatever is uh, good um, and not harmful and uh, object to or ban whatever is uh, not harmful but I don't agree that there are moral uh, that there are such a, that there is such a thing as morally evil or morally uh, good therefore it is not a moral system then you have to really play with the play with the definitions here yeah and yeah that, that's what he's that getting to happen. i think yeah, yeah. And I, yeah. I, 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 it does and it happens in these that that's what happens in these debates sort of inevitably though because of the combative nature of them is that yeah. you're essentially making you know you're moving chess pieces around a boss in the board boss board in a in a linguistic discourse right where there are various moves available to you and one of them is like trap the other guy and not being able to provide explanations another one is like you know paint a picture where they're unable to to provide the correct definitions and then they look yeah. stupid and, that, and these are the moves that are, and that's just then that's just how it's going to be if someone comes out being a dick right oh sorry i know you said not, so, no, no so being a being a, a, a you know being a bad person <laughs> <laughs> i just used i just used very bad uh, swear words earlier so <laughs> i don't know why you're saying sorry uh but but here's the here's the thing um the whole objection started because then the kikachu uh, argued that harm means morally evil uh so how can you not agree that if something is harmful it is morally evil that's a completely idiotic um yeah, argument and question to ask yeah it's it's like that's that's not how it works uh, <laughs> so and that's where the where the objection from t jump's side starts and then it gets a little bit conflated but i really wonder where that will go yes it did best no no active right and wrong utilitarianism doesn't so yes it did best no no ask doesn't. jeremy bentham ask john stuart mill oh, ask any of these philosophers so, so what's your qualification the question, of the question i asked <laughs> Did you see how quickly he 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 went for that one? What's your yeah. qualification of philosophy? And he also uh, said, uh, you know, he also immediately appealed to the to the to the I don't know founders or proponents of utilitarianism as we know it, and basically treats it like it is a religion like Islam, where um, you have to agree with any with everything that they say uh, in order to be truly utilitarian. If you do not, then you are not really a utilitarian uh, person uh, or utilitarianist uh, person, which is entirely wrong. Utilitarianism developed over time after of those people different forms of utilitarianism exist which greatly disagree or agree with many of the things that uh, the founders and proponents uh, of this idea of this idea held uh, I, he even during a debate said uh, something like do you know that, uh, that 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 jeremy bentham actually said many things that are completely unacceptable to liberals today well yeah <laughs> He he thinks that that is a big gotcha moment, right? Yeah, but but that's, that's how it's supposed to be. Those people simply pre presented ideas. That does not mean we abide by every single word and idea that they presented. It is. Yeah, and I, so I think sometimes this question about like someone's credentials or something in philosophy can it depends on the claim, right? So if the claim is about what most philosophers believe or something like that well then someone who's got credentials is presumably going to be in a, in a position to sort of articulate what the various you know what positions people take seriously what positions they don't and, and justify you know they're justified in thinking those sorts of claims whereas maybe someone on the fringes isn't but if the claim is actually about uh, you know the actual contents right then it's not going to do to appeal to 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 your expertise as a philosopher or something because in mm -hmm. that case um the, the point of philosophy just is to dispute there aren't like you know there aren't the kind of settled the settled theory of philosophy that you know f philosophers themselves all disagree about all of these issues and that's the point so you can't really appeal even to things like um what most philosophers believe in fill papers survey to establish points because the point of philosophy is that the things that philosophers talk about are yeah are contentious right so yeah. so the yeah. expertise thing doesn't do a whole lot unless unless maybe someone was saying like look um most you know in in 2022 most people believe x or something and and you might be like well how would you, how would you know that right and and if they're like well 
I, I attend this university and go to all these conferences, that's pro that's going to provide some justification for that claim. And if it, and if they're like, well, you know, I just kind of hang out on YouTube, they're not going to really have a, a way of knowing what's being talked about in the academy or something. But it doesn't, you know, it doesn't give you this kind of, um, it, it doesn't give you this authority to say what's true in the same sense maybe it would for a physicist, right? If someone's like, well, look, I'm a PhD in physics, so here's how the physics is, right? That's a different yeah, yeah. type of thing to I'm a PhD in philosophy, therefore, you know, contested, contentious claim is true or something. Yeah, and you would, you would still have to, I mean, even if you have the, the highest degrees of whatever field you are, you, you specialize and you are still expected to be consistent and accurate in the uh, inf information that you provide, and also to uh, back up the the arguments that you make with actual um, you know facts, with, with evidence that we can uh, view and then judge. Obviously, here in this case, um, he loves to immediately go for the uh, IMA philosophy graduate. You are not, so be quiet. You don't know what you're talking about. Right. But we clearly see that it's not playing in 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 his favor I mean, he, he doesn't provide uh, evidence for any of the claims when you fact check them they turn out to be uh, twisted and wrong and when he talks about a certain moral ideas like utilitarianism and what is morally evil and not he is simply plainly plain simply wrong for everyone to see i mean anyone can see here anyone who has an idea about these moral philosophies can see that he's just uh, talking nonsense and I, I would be very surprised if he had if if he's graduated if he has actually um, graduated with a philosophy degree just in light of and maybe he has but in but even with with a decent grade or something because just in light of him knowing he's going on you know a show to debate someone and putting together an argument that's invalid like that's just really um, I know it's that's what like, baffles me so much it's it's weird I don't understand what's going on I teach him he he looks very confused man. <laughs> By the opening statement. Actually, the question I asked, what's your question? I asked, philosophy? Like, do you know? Wait, wait, you don't back, interrupt. Don't interrupt. Wait, 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 so, so the question I asked was, is how does harm indicate morality? Because his whole argument is, is that skeptics are not consistent because they agree sexual promiscuity is moral, even though it causes harm. But there's no evidence that harm equals morality. In fact, that's literally the wrong thing. We know that's false in philosophy. Harm is irrelevant to morality um, because there can be harmful things which are moral. Uh, and this yeah, is very common. I, um, I guess it could be worded in a better way. Harm is not entirely irrelevant to morality, but you could say that harm is a factor in certain moral perspectives, uh, but maybe irrelevant even within the same um, moral framework, depending on the context, or maybe entirely irrelevant to other moral viewpoints. But yeah, it, well, it certainly is not like uh, a major factor which must play a huge role in all moral systems. That's simply not how it is. The the issue I have is just with Tom making that claim, like we know in philosophy, right, is if like anyone who is a philosopher or studies it or something is going to come to the same conclusion because that's just, you know, they, these are these are like disputed topics and people mm -hmm. have different beliefs. So a lot of people who are naturalists, uh, natural moral realists, that is, um, which you know isn't a, a whole a whole bunch of people, but are going to think that things like harm are like the wrong making properties, right? It, it like it's true that certain things are wrong, and if you ask the question, well, what what's the wrongness you know grounded in or in virtue of? Well, it's in virtue of harm or something like that. Mm -hmm. that uh, harm and and a, a, a cluster of other properties, and that's what some people believe. Um, oh, well, I, I, I think the main. Yeah. Oh, so sorry, sorry. Go ahead. I just, just to say that, like, so that, so that it's not like, and and that, that position gets taken seriously. You know, like that's a naturalist, moral realist. It get, it gets you moral realism if you think that's important. It gets you, uh, and you can still be a naturalist. And it's what some professional philosophers believe. So it's not, it's not going to be true that just when we do philosophy, we know this. But I, I sort of, I'm also sympathetic towards Tom saying this because of how combative and douchey Daniel's being in the conversation. Right? It's like you've got to yeah. do this sort of stuff to. Navigate. Yeah, what's what the thing is? Um, Daniel makes uh, claims about uh, consistency among atheists and people like T Jump, uh, and T Jump just asks a simple question. He says, "How do you establish 
this and then daniel uh, gets very angry yeah. and starts interrupting and, and and gets loud and questions his degrees and all that uh, but it's just a very simple question and, uh, and and here the issue is the disagreement uh starts when daniel makes a simply factually wrong claim uh where he basically um where he implies or says that harm is um a universal um, factor which decides whether something is morally evil or not. That simply is not true. In order for that to be true, you would have to um, establish that all moral perspectives that exist consider uh, harm morally evil or and consider something that is not harmful morally, uh, not, not morally evil. Uh, you, but you can't do that. If you are going to act like this is universally unanimous in morality, then you are simply wrong. You are making a mistake. You are yeah. muted, by the way. But uh, but oh, he, yeah. here's also the issue. If T-Jump wants to jump in now and say that is wrong, uh, because actually morality, uh, harm does not matter at all to morality, that is also wrong. Because harm does uh, to matter to many uh, moral viewpoints but may not be a factor in others. Yeah, if, if the argument is supposed to um, be persuasive to all atheists, right, the point is that it, it has to be the case that all atheists are committed to the, the same claims that Daniel exactly. is saying, exactly. that, right, that, that, exactly. that harm is morality. So, so if there's some that don't, the argument's going to be unsuccessful. I yeah. think Tom's in the chat, by the way, as well. I sent really? On Facebook, I sent you a StreamYard join link, Tom, if you oh. want to join. Yeah. Tom, if you want to join, do it. Do it. So 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 you agree harm doesn't indicate it's immoral. So even if your initial sexual... claim, your initial claim was that harm has nothing to do with morality. And I simply pointed out that yes, it does have no. a lot to do with morality. That's that's literally irrelevant to the question here. So <laughs> things can cause harm and be moral. Therefore, if yeah, something is harmful, it doesn't tell you whether or not it's moral. I didn't say that. I said that harm is a is evidence that something could be immoral. No, that's literally that's not what he said at all. That's never what he argued. It's not what he said in the opening at all. He might have said that's, it recently yeah. in this little bit, but not. Yeah, but that was not at all his argument in the opening speech. Yeah. Not we both did not hear such a thing. Yeah. On the contrary, his his argument was was uh, repeatedly that. Uh, certain things are proven to be harmful, but atheists still uh, uh, agree that they are okay. Therefore, they, we are being inconsistent because we are allowing harmful things. That was his argument. That was his main argument in the opening statement. Yeah, and that was that is simply stupid. Oh, Tom is here, by the way. He Let's, is. I see him in hey, the private chat. Hey. hey, how's it going? Hey, <laughs> good. How are you? Pretty good. I just yeah. got here. I had a conversation with uh D david fitzgerald on jesus mythicism so couldn't come early or oh you're always doing something right always live yeah. always streaming yeah we were just uh talking about you i don't know if you can tell <laughs> what oh I had no idea I just popped in just to say hi happy to be talking about me coincidence <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah i did there were a few things like i was really interested going into this debate because i thought he was going to bring up such a really interesting argument that like atheist epistemologies are inconsistently overly skeptical of God. And that would have been a really interesting debate, but he took it in this totally weird direction that some atheists are inconsistent in political beliefs and don't aren't as like as fastidious and looking at evidence for like feminism or whatever, as they are for God, which has nothing to do with me. Like, I don't know why he, he picked that topic to debate me when I'm like more of like a centrist. So I, I don't even, I don't even know how he, began to think this was a good idea because he's essentially just saying some atheists are humans and are not perfectly consistent and rationally I'm like wow what, what an amazing insight into humanity that no one has ever thought of before in the history of the world it, yeah. it's unclear you know like uh, so he picked the topic right because it yeah it seems technically technically he's he's won right the debate the debate topic because you've conceded <laughs> that uh that there are in fact some atheists who are inconsistent and that that's kind of the problem i think with the with that debate topic it's such a mess but... well yeah the worst thing was is like he didn't explain what he meant by it so i when i was talking with modern day debates i was like 
Daniel suggested this topic, are atheists consistent skeptics? And he's like, oh, and you're the affirmative, like me. I'm supposed to be the affirmative of this debate. Like right. clearly, clearly he's trying to say that um, atheists are just not logically consistent in some way. So he's making the affirmative, but he phrased it in such a way that I'd have to take the affirmative anyway. But like, all right, I'll, I'll do it. Let's go with it. Fine, whatever. But the, the way he never explained that he was going to go in this direction about some kind of political inconsistency. Daniel like, Kikichu has this, uh, he has this obsession with uh, political uh, matters and with uh, the corruption of the West and uh, and all of that. He loves to appeal to um, evidence, which he never likes to actually present and loves to appeal to statistics and birth rates, which he brings up in every debate, even if it's about whether God exists or not. And uh, <laughs> so th th this is what he does all the time. He uh he debates with people about whether Islam is good or not. And then he brings the whole discussion to, you know, America invaded many uh, countries. So Islam is good. How dare you argue otherwise? And it seems like um, what, what's funny is he proposes this debate topic and you would expect that he would now, um, you know, argue that atheist uh, beliefs and perspectives are incoherent or inconsistent. But what actually happens and everybody's baffled by this is that he argues, uh, well, America meddles in other people's uh, <laughs> internal <laughs> conflicts and businesses and atheists don't object to that. Therefore, where is your skepticism, atheists? <laughs> but his, his original, his initial argument was even weirder. I mean, we, we've talked about the first problem was it's not even valid right which is a bit of an issue for and it, and he's got um six well, it's, premises and two so conclusions over two pages which... I, I do want to say one thing though like for most people i wouldn't say you need a valid argument like it's 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 a pretty high bar to say that you want someone to actually be able to write a formal syllogism and get it right if it's just an average guy on modern day debate you know you don't expect them to have a formal argument but he has a phd from harvard or whatever right come on he can't make a formal syllogism like this this is a little bad I don't know, like even, you know, most people I'd think should be able to just, you know, like two premises and a conclusion or something, right? I don't know. I don't know that that's, I, but yeah, it's even worse in light of the claims that he's making about his education and stuff. You but know what's weird? I, I sit here questioning my own sanity when I listen to this stuff. And I, I feel like, wait a minute, am I getting all of this wrong? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You feel gaslit. I, I get this a lot as well when people are so like far removed from the way I'm thinking about things. I'm like, is, is there something, is my reality like just completely yeah. wrong? Yeah, I, I, had I, same, I had the exact same experience in the debate when he said like most atheists are moral realists. My, my mind was blown. I'm like, what? Like Where do you all get of from? the people on my channel are yelling at me. Moral realism is stupid. How can right. you possibly believe that? I'm like, I don't even know where he get that from. From like, Nathan, what's your perspective? Do you think most most general atheists are moral realists? I, I don't think that they're going to be, no. I think most are going to, you know, instead just explain things in terms of some evolutionary story and emotions or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I was I was there doubting, like, wait, am I wrong about this? Could I be wrong about this? Like, is my impression of most atheism wrong here? Like, I don't know. It was, it was so weird. The, the confidence in which he said that, I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah, it's the confidence trick, yeah. <laughs> the con man. Yeah. We all feel always gaslit when Dan Kikichu comes in and starts presenting his very strange arguments. So, <laughs> no well, so the here. other thing about the, the other thing that was weird, right, was the argument he actually presented formally seemed to be saying something like atheists who live in liberal Western de democracy, democracies should be revolting. Oh, yeah. Like Why did he never get back to that? What, what was the relevance yeah. of that? He, <laughs> he brings it up at the beginning, but then never actually does anything about it. What is going on? <laughs> so my like to try and steal man's argument to the strongest possible way would be something like um, there are many far left atheists who are like denying facts about, let's say, gender or biology or whatever. And there is good arguments against them, but they want to include the, the leftist social justice kind of arguments or whatever. And he's saying that they're not skeptical of those because there's evidence against them and there's a legitimate debate there where they are skeptical against god and if they applied the same epistemic standards to god that they do to feminism then they wouldn't believe in feminism and they revolt against feminist professors or something i think, I think that's like the most rational way i can interpret his argument <laughs> and, and the entire foundation of that i mean he starts the entire thing with uh atheists uh agree that you know 
atheists only operate based on scientific facts and and <laughs> everything, and, 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 everything. and they don't and they only believe they, they don't believe in god because god cannot be scientifically proved yeah, but, that hurt my head the way he defines what? skepticism like <laughs> skepticism is using empiricism to verify every claim every belief you have i'm just like how <laughs> where where, which dictionary please provide is there like a, a muslim dictionary that says this somewhere <laughs> yeah but what about those chinese right they were atheists and <laughs> <laughs> i don't yeah, know spending, this, this makes me this makes first... me sit here and makes me think um i don't know maybe maybe i'm i'm, I'm dreaming maybe i'm on the, <laughs> maybe I'm, I'm losing it i'm dissociating with you know from reality i should lean back and you know Maybe I should see a doctor. I don't know. That's how I feel when I listen to this. I, I, I don't. I just don't understand how this can be. I mean, ex somebody explain this to me. This guy claims to be um, a graduate from a from from Harvard uh, with in, in philosophy, and he brags about it. It's he always brings it up. What are your degrees? What are your qualifications? I I graduated from Harvard on, on philosophy. There's no but way then, that's, that he's but a then PhD he talks about these things and he makes no sense. He sounds like an amateur in terms of philosophy. He doesn't know uh he doesn't understand utilitarianism. He doesn't understand that not all moral systems judge based on uh based on harm. He doesn't understand very simple things which you learn in a simple philosophy in Reduction course. I don't understand. Yeah, the definition of of uh, skeptic is just awful. And then I gave, I asked for a definition of um, consistent or inconsistent, and he just, I don't think he knows what the definition is. He gave an example, um, and typically when people do that, it's because they don't know what the definition is. And so I'm guessing he just he doesn't know what that is either. Which, if you have a degree in philosophy, that is that's kind of an important thing to know. Yeah, I find it funny that he gets offended when you ask him to explain why, exa how exactly um, harm uh, decides whether something is morally evil or not, and then he gets offended by that and starts <laughs> starts yelling at you and questioning your your qualifications. If you make an argument, uh, you shouldn't be offended when you are asked to explain that, right? <laughs> yeah, I think he just he was so blindsided by it because he didn't. <laughs> he didn't think anybody would ever question that. And so the fact that I did just threw him off his track yeah. so much. He did he had no idea what to do other than to get yeah. angry. Yeah. So the next thing to do is to like, well, attack the person, like delegitimize that. Their question's not legitimate if it's coming from someone who doesn't have a degree, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what else needs to be said. I mean, this is just um I would I would really suggest Muslims, uh Muslim fans of Daniel Kikichu um to watch this and and be honest to yourself. If, uh, people think that he uh, that Daniel Kikichu actually makes a lot of sense that he's very rational and he we sat down and listened to it and you can see everything for yourself even if you want to talk about the evidence that he brings I just went and oh did you see that uh Tom his whole no, I just about, I immediately ended my show and Joan here so I didn't get to see any of it yet look at this so there was, there was this one point where he persistently argued that atheists agree that uh 87% of atheists agree that abortion should be legal in all cases. And you then say, that can't be right. It's probably not all cases. And then he persistently says, no, it is. I gave you the, uh, I, I told you it's pure research. All 87% uh, agree it should be legal in all cases. So I went there and actually looked at the research as I was watching it. And uh, your skepticism there, funnily uh, enough, was completely accurate. Here is the research that he's referencing. Should abortion be uh, legal? in um wait a minute atheists 87 percent of atheists agree that abortion should be legal in all slash most cases is that what he persistently argued no he said it's definitely all and it's even broken down here into uh 50 percent is all and 37 percent is most it's clearly right here you just yeah, have to look wow. at the data it's right there but when you question this, when you apply your skepticism, which he consistently asks for, he says, no, no, like I presented it. It's all. Yeah, I'm not surprised that he was factually wrong about things, because I think I don't know if there's anything he was factually right about uh, in the entire debate, except maybe like liberal colonialism. I, I've never even heard that term before. I know colonialism. and I was right about the date on that one. He, he was wrong. But like he's made up this new term, liberal colonialism. Like that's not a thing. Does, does it just mean whenever a liberal nation did colonialism, and that's that's what he's talking about? 
I think it would also include in, into that um, if Western countries have uh, an, an influence on how Saudi Arabia does uh, politics and what kind of Islamic teachings they allow, then that is liberal colonialism. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, and apparently liberalism is anything that uh, liberal authors advocate for um, in their book at all at any point. So if they want you to conquer a nation, that's that's liberalism too. Clearly, <laughs> clearly, Equal and atheist, rights and yeah. conquering. Atheist consensus is if somebody in uh, China uh, thinks something, <laughs> <laughs> that, that is atheist consensus. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, man, it's 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 very bad, terrible situation. Yeah. I was I was definitely hoping for something a little more substantive in that in that debate. You had your uh, hopes high, right? Yep, yep. He sounds smart. He sounds educated. He he has well, a decent vocabulary. Well, that's the apologetics game, right? In there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, is there anything else that we need to talk about? I think it's very obvious. No oh, criticisms of me. That's we, we skipped over that part. Well, you were terrible. Uh, <laughs> just, uh, uh, I think there are a, there are a couple of points where you're saying things that I'm not too sure. I think that you're saying them because of the debate context, right? So, like, he's, um, you know, it, he's being super aggressive and confrontational. So you're like, well, how can I sort of, like, trap him in things that he's said and stuff? But I'm not sure. Uh, you, you know, like you said, um, in philosophy, we know that... Um, harm isn't a wrong making property or something like that or ha harm isn't wrong and it's like well some people think that some people don't think that you know it just depends on what your theory is and it's not like philosophy philosophers as a whole have like a consensus on any of these things so it's like it's things like that where it's not strictly true but saying you know like in philosophy we know this is it given he's kind of posturing is like well where's your degree right it's like well you know <laughs> yeah yeah. Yeah. So in that context, I should have said like necessarily or something. We know it's not necessarily tied in. And that's probably what I was trying to go for in that situation. Yeah. And so it's with the heat of the moment, you're just yelling at him. Exactly. So, yeah. That's. I, and so I think it makes. I think the things like that, right? They're they're my criticisms, but it, they also make sense given the like tension stuff that's going on. So. Yeah. Um, that point. I mean, his his entire um, assertion there, very boldly, is. Um, if something is harmful, then that means it's uh, morally wrong, and that's just that's just an. And idiotic, all atheists believe that. Further, yeah, right? yeah. You you cannot uh, say that this is that universally. If something is harmful, it is morally wrong. That it's simply that's simply not how it works. That means you are ignorant of philosophy and of how uh, what what kinds of moral perspectives people uh, hold and adhere to. So um, you rightly call him out on that, and he gets angry. Um, you say then in response that harm uh, has nothing to do with it, that it's uh, irrelevant uh, to to morality, which is I think is wrong. It is it is relevant to moral perspectives. But I guess what happens there is that in the moment of the heat, things get mixed up. Well, uh, no, so I, I would say that it isn't. So I would say that consent matters more than harm. So if someone wants to say commit suicide or something and they consent to it, even though that's the one of the greatest harms you can cause them, it would still be moral to kill them. So like assisted suicide, Dave Warnock, um, if he wants to die, I think it's moral to harm him in that case. And so I think that harm doesn't directly have anything to do with morality. I think it's more about consent. And if you consent to having harm done to you, then it's perfectly moral to be harmed. So I think th theory, theories that say that something like harm is a wrong-making property are going to say, well, there's there's like any there's a lot of properties that go into you know any sort of real stakes of affairs that make them right or wrong, um, you know, like natural properties, and um, and it's just going to be kind of balancing those off against each other. So it could be the case that you know th there's there's some harm involved, but there's these other various properties that are good-making properties that sort of outweigh it. So even though there's the presence of harm, you know, that's not. It's not. It's not that the presence of harm is. Um, it, it's not that the presence of harm guarantees that something is wrong or something. But it's that it, it's the way you kind of like count these various properties together. Uh, and and so the more harm that you have, right, that's going to make something wrong. That's one of these wrong making properties. But it, it doesn't guarantee its presence doesn't guarantee that it's uh, that it's wrong. That's well, how I, I think would, someone I like Peter Railton thinks about it. But, well, I would again. Yeah, I disagree with Peter Railton and. Uh... Peter Singer and right. their models. But so from my perspective, I think that harm 
is ambiguous. It, it's amoral on its own and its morality depends on whether or not someone consents to it. So like, for example, if I consent to playing a very difficult video game like Dark Souls or something and get very, very upset by it, I'm, I'm emotionally harmed by it, but it was consensual. I, I agreed. I wanted to have this experience. And so harm can be moral just as often as it can be immoral. It just is that we have a tendency to not consent to harm in general, given our current psychological and biological states. Okay, so what I have, um, I think my only issue with with uh, that, now based on what was said during the debate, is that the wording can be improved. So um, you would say, you would argue that um, harm alone is not a deciding factor and therefore irrelevant to whether something is morally evil or not. But when you say, like during the debate, that harm is completely irrelevant to... Uh, well, morality, I think that's what Tom that, believes, actually. That, that, that yeah. sounds yeah. like... Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm with Nathan here. I think that harm tells you nothing. If you can measure the harm of an action, it will tell you zero of whether or not the action is moral or immoral. So okay, but the issue is that's, that's only your perspective, right? So yes. you, you hold the perspective yeah. that, that harm is entirely right. irrelevant to morality. And in that claim, I was only making a claim about from my perspective. I wasn't making I a general philosophical claim. Okay, okay but the, the issue here is um, he makes it look like it is uh, a universal truth, reality, that harm decides whether something is moral or not. And you then object to it and say, uh, actually, harm is irrelevant to morality because you are speaking about your own perspective, and things really get lost there. Uh, I, I would say the the, the the reality is that um, you know morality is a huge field of different perspectives. In some of them, harm is the deciding factor. In others, it is a factor. In some others, it is completely irrelevant. That would be the truth. So the 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 claim that Daniel makes in the beginning, the assertion that he makes, is simply completely wrong. Introduces a big confusion. Uh, if you then argue that it's irrelevant to your perspective, that's totally acceptable. Uh, I think that the wording can be improved where we add that it is not entirely relevant to morality in general. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was just giving a counter example, which was my <clears> model. <throat> and <throat> I could have phrased that better to say that uh, it's not necessarily relevant to most mortals like for example mine it has no relevance whatsoever and then give mm -hmm. an example like you can have the greatest harm and if it's consensual it's moral and so that disproves if my model is correct that disproves your claim that harm equates that to all life. atheists believe that, <laughs> that all atheists <laughs> believe. <laughs> oh god i hated that too or like halfway through the debate or right at the beginning he brings up most atheists and then i start talking about all the other atheists who are mostly moral uh, relativists and he's like why are you talking about the other atheists <laughs> I mean, his his whole idea is uh, all he wants to do is he wants to say um, atheists, uh, most atheists um, believe in science only, but they also have these wrong views about these things, although we have scientific facts which should uh, make them think otherwise. And that's all he wants to argue. If you then come and talk about how... Um, 15% of atheists actually don't hold those views. That's irrelevant to him because what he wants to talk about is atheists as a group and a political um, force. But that's that's just um, that's just not a way to approach the situation. And even there, he makes false claims. I mean, I have never heard of an atheist who believes that you can only make moral judgments based on science. Right? And that was one of his claims, which is that ridiculous. Was, that was like his main yeah. claim. That was like his main argument at the beginning of his uh, his like rebuttal stage. Like that is the claim. Like, that is so dumb. I've never heard of an atheist who thinks like that. Well. Yeah, like yeah. Yes. And it, but, and his, but this is what this is what is like earlier, his idea of the sciences as well is like um, just looking in a test tube or something, right? And it's like, so where in this <laughs> test tube am I going to get my political beliefs? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go to the laboratory to come up with some new political ideas. I mean, yeah, that's uh, man. I mean, what kind of? I I don't even. I, this is just. I will be baffled by this forever. How this guy, <laughs> who claims to be so great in philosophy, says these things. Do you guys know of any um, respectable Muslim debaters who are like intellectually honest and willing to like really debate things? I would suggest only one that I know, who is uh, Abdullah Andalusi. He was he debated before on Modern Day Debate with Matt Dillahunty. I think, um, although I would say he's inconsistent uh, and very wrong on many things, he I think he's quite honest and he tries to be 
really you know, thorough and all that. And he's very respectful, I would say. He wouldn't he won't talk to me because I'm the ultimate evil and all that. But <laughs> but he will well, probably he have a debate with me you. either because I uh, psychologized him on Pine Creek once. So <laughs> <laughs> with me about that. Oh, oh that's that's but the other guy. That, that's the other guy. That's oh, that a different one. one. Yeah, that's uh, the other okay, guy. That's yeah. The... yeah. What do you think of uh, Hamza Tortis? <laughs> <laughs> not a fan uh, well here's the thing I sympathize with the way he um, presents himself and he talks about things but I mean he's just I would say he's a dishonest guy because he believes in terrible abhorrent things and hangs around with people like Muhammad Hijab and, uh, and Ali Dawa, who are his gang, and then acts like, oh, you know, people just have big misconceptions about Islam and all that. But yeah, I, I, he, he's more of, an, of, of a grown up if you want to have a discussion with somebody, I would say. Uh, definitely preferable to people like Dinah Gikichu, Muhammad Hijab, and all those weirdos. Yeah. Hamza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that's 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 just childish <laughs> that's a whole different level <laughs> uh, yeah anyway all right are we are we done here or or uh are we supposed to give a grade to this debate and to uh tom for his for his performance i, I think i'm a 10 out of 10 i think it's a great 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 <laughs> the debater the atheist debater did a phenomenal job in this debate just super props <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't. We didn't really see a lot of a whole lot of Tom because we spent like two hours on the on uh, the opening statement as well. But I think, um, I think your opening statement of I, I have no idea what you just said. That was all <laughs> thing. It's probably about as good. <laughs> as good, <laughs> as good. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea how any of this relates to the question. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that 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 was pretty good. <laughs> uh, my favorite part um, when he said. You were taking college class, and I was like, "Well, I, I did. I missed the college class on how to teach kids." So that one, I loved that. That was a good moment. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I watched you a few times. I mean, I watched you debate uh, people occasionally. I don't really watch debates very, very much, but I, I don't know. I feel like this is the, this is the first time that I saw you get very, very <laughs> angry and oh, you want to watch the Jay Dyer one. and argumentative. <laughs> <laughs> T jump and J Dyer if you want to see oh, really? getting frustrated. Yeah, I have I have a list of dumpster fires, which are all the yelly ones. Me and Godless Girl, that's that's a good one. Uh the Darth Dawkins ones, those are good ones. Yeah, there's there's a number of screamers. Oh, me and um oh, Jack Ingstrikes and his crew. That one, lots of screaming in that one. Nice, nice. All right. So I give this debate a uh eight out of ten. No, actually a seven out of ten. Uh, I give Daniel Kikachu uh, two out of ten. Um, it's hard to see how it could be. What like what would a one out of ten look like? You know, like <laughs> I, I, I just want to give him one one point for for the effort. <laughs> yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe it could have been worse. You know, he could have, he could have literally just turned up with like the the ISIS flag behind him. And this. well, I mean, to be fair, he's not Nadir. He didn't say, but the bees, the that's, four that's facts right. about bees in the Quran. Right. You are right about that. Okay. Nadir is absolutely terrible. And, but, yeah, yeah. But I, I, honestly, I I have to say something here. Um, I will be very honest about this now. I watched Daniel Kikichu before. I had a conversation with him twice. And um, in all honesty, I think this was one of the worst performances that I have ever seen from him. He made absolutely no damn sense throughout the entire conversation. He was beyond horrible. I mean, I, I don't like the guy, but this was the worst performance of his that I have seen. So I have to say this. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think he agrees that's why he's made like three or four videos about me on his channel now just because of this so i think he he may subconsciously agree with you <laughs> right <laughs> probably i don't know yeah yeah anyway i'm gonna read a few super chats here quickly uh anya nuri made a super sticker which i cannot see here because of my uh program that i'm using but thank you so much i appreciate it uh i read this before uh <laughs> Uh, Saina said, cross check your references, shocked. How few Muslims still defend support Sharia? I'm a Hindu, I born Manu Smriti. I don't know what that means. I follow good spiritual things in Hinduism. Nice. Good luck with that. Uh, I, um, Abishkek Godness said, what are your views on Hinduism? Thousands 
uh, old culture with a scientific and not a religion, but more focused on the culture and evolution as a human. Uh, I learned about human, uh, Hinduism a bit. I researched a little bit. I was quite interested in the past. Um, I'm interested in some cultural aspects and the traditions of it. Um, that said, I think Hinduism brings a lot of falsehoods uh, with it, a lot of fantasy thinking, uh, a lot of um, apathy and a very wrong way of ruling a society. I think it's an outdated belief that people should move on from while taking maybe the good things from it. That's my view. What do you guys think? So I really like that in Hinduism, they give real numbers for their ages of the earth. And so they, they predict the age of the earth is 4.3 a billion years old uh one of the waking cycles of brahma or whatever and that's pretty that's the most accurate prediction any religion ever made now technically they think that we're only like halfway through it so it's only like two billion so they're off by a bit but that's probably the most accurate prediction in any religion i've heard of for is, like is, is that actually years. found in a, in a in a fundamental in an essential source of yes Hindus? their their text of the age of the earth is like strictly the fundamental thing is the Bhagavad Gita itself is oh. where the numbers are found. So it's pretty, pretty core. I yeah, read the Bhagavad Gita. I, yeah. It's in the Vedas, I think. Uh, oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. The, so the, the actual philosophy of Hinduism, I find fairly interesting of, of all the religions, maybe the most interesting one, because, you know, the idea that um, the self is God, right? Then you've just kind of forgotten something is pretty weird and fascinating. But, um, the religion itself, I find incredibly harmful. Like the caste system in India is just a complete mess. Um, so that would be a reason to sort of abandon Hinduism as its practice as a religion. And also, you know, the, the scientific claims that are found in the um, various religious texts, I think, are just are, are just false. I've watched a lot of a, a lot of the Hindu apologists, right? They base they base their apologetics around arguing that these are in fact right. And I just see all the same problems with that as I do, you know, when young earth creationists or whatever. I mean, as Tom says, they're more accurate, right, than the young earth creationists at least. But um yeah, I've got I, I've got some serious problems with those sorts of things. It's uh it's also i I read the Bhagavad Gita, which is the only text actually that I really read from Hinduism. And it has a very um it has a it has a a, a moral message on how to um how to fulfill your role in the world in life and it actually um you know the religion itself actually gives you um an ideology an idea based on which you are supposed to live and it tells you you know you might uh you are currently in a conflict you will fight those people that are close to you those people that you love you are you will be at war with them and you don't want to fight you don't want to kill but you have to understand that in the current situation this is what uh you have you have a role to fulfill in this world and you must act accordingly and i feel like it, it's a it's an interesting um interesting philosophy and very interesting that something so old gives people like a very uh deep um explanation of uh what you are doing in this world and how you um how you should act basically i'm saying this in very um primitive words right now it's much more sophisticated than that <laughs> but uh then again I, it, I think it also kind of um takes control of how you are supposed to think about society and that's just where i'm i'm kind of in conflict with it yeah uh since nobody else had anything else to say i'll move on to the next one zoinks said ap do you plan on writing a book i am writing a book i have been writing a book for two years now uh, uh it would have been done long ago unfortunately writing a book apparently never really goes according to the initial plan so i'm still far from done but it will be it will be called the end of Islam, and it will be a complete analysis of Islamic claims and their refutations. Question about that: Have you found like publishers that help you do like advertising things, or are you no, self-publishing? No, I, haven't, I haven't gotten in contact with anybody yet. I want to only start searching once I have something that I can actually show for myself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jane Miller made a super chat and didn't say anything, but thank you so much. Uh, and Jesus or Muhammad made a super sticker, which I cannot see, which is apparently a peach for some reason that looks very sexual, but thank you. <laughs> and, um, 
Oh, wait a minute, there's one thing I missed somewhere. M. Doug said, so premarital sex is shocking, yet having sex slaves is not? <laughs> yeah. As long as there's no harm involved. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny too, because I think somebody in the chat brought up the uh, necrophilia part. Well, there's no, you're not harming the body, right? So by, by right, Daniel's exactly. definition, it shouldn't be wrong. Come on. Yes, yeah, yeah. that's true. Therefore, just go to a graveyard and do what you want to do. It's not morally wrong because there's no harm involved. Yeah, that's funny. Well, okay, he he could argue that uh, that the soul is still, you know, like uh, attached to the body, and the body still goes through things when uh, the human dies, and you are still harming an actual being and all that. But then, if we strip it off his religious worldview, then we could say, well. I don't believe that that there is a soul, so there should be nothing wrong with you know just doing that. I'm not causing harm to anybody or anyone. Well, what's your problem with that? If you want me to not rape dead people, then you need to convince me why I should believe that there is a soul. You know, that's the issue. Yeah, it's, it's funny how they find that reviling, but not <laughs> with underage girls and and uh, sex slaves and forced marriages. Those are fine, but the dead body. You know, right. That's that's where the cutoff is. What you don't understand is that uh, men need to marry little girls in order to make sure that they make enough babies uh, and, hell, and, and preserve. <laughs> YouTube demonetization, activate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that, that is his actual argument. I mean, I'm not making this up. Look, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this just. For, just Seriously? For, yeah, I'm going to play this just now. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm serious. That's what he argues. Well, that, that is why I think the population of Afghanistan is like 50% under age 15 or something. Right. Here, I'm going to show you the clip so that you don't think I'm making this stuff up. <laughs> I'm serious, man. <laughs> you have Heku says, under Sharia, Muhammad was allowed to marry Aisha, Aisha when she was six, would this be allowed under your system, Daniel? Yeah, I mean, uh, this is something that many cultures practice to this day. And it's, again, it's based on this biological reality. They're trying to maximize the fertility window of women because they want to have more children. Women. And this is basically the way that psych evolutionary psychologists explain it. And I'm not promoting evolution, but these are people that you would respect or other atheists. Yeah. They say that it's actually to an evolutionary advantage to maximize the fertility window so you have as many children as possible. Because women only have about 25 to 30 years of fertility. If they wait until they're 25 or 30 or 35 to get married, and have kids or have sex, then that means they'll only have maybe one, maximum two children. But this will allow extinction of the population and for <laughs> the people to be wiped out. And this is why you find it uh, in so many societies uh, in the pre-modern period and even today, because it's biologically hardwired. And you have a discussion actually about whether marrying uh, children who are, who are pubescent Okay, so around 10 years old, nine years old, this is something that there's a dispute and a debate within psychology whether this is a psychological disorder. And your secular atheist psychologists say that, no, it can't be considered a dysfunction because it is practiced in these societies. It's evolutionarily adaptive, so it's not actually causing any harm. And when we look at the girls and the women in these societies, there's nothing that is dysfunctional about them and uh, problematic. Right. Marriage to uh, nine-year-olds is not considered pedophilia. What is pedophilia are the practices of modern pedophiles who go into the closet and diddle little kids. That's But if it's not in the closet, right? That it's absolutely fine abomination. if it's within. Islam does not promote that. Islam promotes marriage. It promotes family. <sighs> it promotes these wholesome values. And other societies have practiced this as well. He said Islam doesn't allow, you know, the Western way, you know, like how there's pedophilia, etc. Yeah, Islam just legalizes pedophilia. Uh, Aisha, one could actually argue, she actually didn't even have kids. So maybe she was damaged internally because she was married at the age of nine. This is what happens when you become so dogmatic about one particular idea. Now, to, in this debate, it seems like he's overly concerned about the fertility rate. Yes, from the moment a little girl has her first period, that's it turn her into a baby-making machine, as though this is her only purpose in life, to just make babies. The solution that Daniel Hikikachu offers are beyond disgusting. 
I gave you the justification. I gave you the reasoning. I showed you that this is something that is practiced uh, pretty widely in the world. And even many cultures today, they, they practice it. Women actually naturally want to have children. This is a natural biological function. And people have been doing it for all of human history. It's only human rights extremism that is destroying these cultures and these traditions and these practices. Like literally that justifies rape and slavery and torture and every kind of uh, hor horrendous thing humans have ever done in the past. Well, because it was good for evolution, therefore it's totally fine, right? Lots of people are doing it. <laughs> 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 and listen, and these these evolutionary psychologists, you know, there's there's lots of them. There's lots of them, and they're saying it's like it's like a, you know Trump speech about bringing the light inside the body, where he's like, and the scientists they're saying they can bring the light inside the body. It's just that's probably the a combination of the of the stupidest and most reprehensible sort of topics combined that I've ever heard anyone talk. Like that, I, I was thinking as I was watching his face, like, does does he? He actually believes this. Like he actually thinks that it's okay for a grown adult man, right, to have sex with a six or seven year old girl. What we are talking about is not even just a regular grown man. We are talking about in this example a fifty five year old man who has sex with a nine year old girl. <sighs> oh my god. And he says this is actually a wholesome value. This is actually good because it uh, it aims to uh, maximize the fertility rate, which is what women also want. So therefore, it's not bad. This is actually very good. And science supports this. Yeah. I'm sure it's what those seven-year-olds want, right? They, they, they understand what all that stuff means. Yeah, you, it's definitely. You, you both didn't false. believe that I was actually. You both didn't believe yeah. that this was actually that he actually said these things, right? But here, here you have it. Well, after having debated him, I I was not super skeptical. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, there, 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 the science is pretty clear that uh, young women having uh, pregnancies is very damaging to the body. So it's not it's yeah. not in any way healthy. There's right. there's no ambiguity. There's no debates. It's it's definitely physically bad for the body. Pregnancy on its own is physically bad for the body. For an extremely young body, it's significantly worse and can cause significantly higher rates of death and permanent damage. And he has this logic, like um, at, at the age of around the age of nine, if a girl starts to have her uh, her puberty, then that just it's just the body signaling that she's now ready to get pregnant. Therefore, you can uh, start the race now. But it's 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 stupid. I mean, that just means uh, your body starts uh, developing a function, which does not mean that it is now time for you to do this thing i mean you could also argue that uh your brain starts to you know uh, memorize things at the age of uh i don't know five and preserve memories therefore you should become the president of the united states as a five years old it's, oh, it's a bird, a a bird got a feather it's ready to fly one feather yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right. yeah that's crazy that's horrible logic man it's, i don't know this is the stuff that we're dealing with. I'm glad that you guys had your good uh, share of <laughs> of the insanity here. It's just so crazy. It's that thing that you were saying before, though, you know, about where you, you start thinking, am I the crazy one? Like, is everything I think I know about the world just completely wrong? Am I in some sort of fever dream? Because, you know, the fact that someone can just sit there, like, deadpan with a straight face and deliver that, it's almost like a parody, right, of... Uh, it's just so... It's insane to me. And the fact that he does have a degree from Harvard, because I mean, I respect that. That's that is an actual accomplishment to get a degree from a very prestigious university, and to be that stupid and to have yeah, such right. a prestigious degree causes me cognitive dissonance yeah. that I don't like in my brain about this should not be possible. I know, I know. That's why I'm questioning uh, everything right now. <laughs> He just said that. Yeah, it's the it's the deadpan delivery, you know. Like, there's no hint of like a smirk or anything. He, he's just like, yes, yeah, six year olds. Like, hey. at some point when I first heard of this guy and saw him talk, I was I was I was thinking, what if there there were conspiracy theories when I was a Muslim uh, <laughs> that there are some uh, and some people or out there or entities out there that are uh, you know uh, that have this mission to make Islam look bad or to destroy Islam right. internally and <laughs> I'm over those things long ago you know but but when I saw this guy I was like maybe those things are true you know maybe this guy is, is maybe this guy is paid by people to make islam collapse internally by making it look horrible to everybody <laughs> oh 
Well, actually, I mean, maybe I, I'm going to start believing that, right? In light of that, because that's what the only way to make the cognitive dissonance go away. I know it's it's crazy. Uh, and he's both stupid and holds very reprehensible views, uh, and it just shouldn't be the case with everything that he claims for himself. Anyway, yeah. Uh, there's not much more to say. We have been live for three and a half hours. Wonderful. Uh, Max, the confessor said, great show, F. Daniel. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know what F stands for. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, it's probably free. Uh, fruit, Daniel, yeah. Or free, Daniel. Anyway, um, all right. We'll go uh, offline. T-Jump, uh, Tom, you have your own YouTube channel, right? Yep, youtube.com slash T jump. I sell bathtubs. You, you sell what? <laughs> you, you sell what? Bathtubs. That's my fault. That's what I do on YouTube. I sell bathtubs. Did you know oh, that? yeah. Oh, yeah. That's fantastic. That's that's awesome. I'll go there right now. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you also frequently appear on uh, debates like uh, on, on Modern Day Debate on, and on other platforms or just there? Yeah. Well, uh, whoever pays me usually, uh, James has me on contract or something. So I, I, I work. <laughs> I'm obligated to be on his channel at some point. But yeah, uh, anybody can invite me on to do debates whenever. Fantastic. Awesome. Uh, and Nathan, we already talked about you. Uh, yeah. Digital uh, Nurses, people can check it out. <laughs> new headphones. They're not pink anymore. Yeah. that Well, the pink ones, they're still there, um, actually, in that corner. It was, it was right. because I think I had an interview or something like that. And I didn't want to wear a pink one because I thought people would think it was silly. I was trying to be manipulative. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so you can find uh, Nathan on his channel, Digital Gnosis, which is tagged in the title and also in the description and also T-Jump right there. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. My mind is uh, blown and so is yours, I hope. Uh, or there's something wrong with you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, thanks everyone for watching have a fantastic day and stay away from Islam